We still have 10 meters to go. Thank you. Oh yeah, I think that's Lophelia rubble. Um, that's a good promising sign that the top of this ridge has some living coral on it. Right. And actually the the rubble itself is home to, to many different organisms. Very high biodiversity there. Sure, lots of places to settle in and hide. Ooh, a shark. Yes. All right, Andrea. <laughs> what do you got? I think that's Lamanema up there. There's a small, like, coddling leg or rat tail fish at the top. It may not be Lamanema. It's too far away. We're going to get in on this shark here. Let's see what this is. Sweet. All right, let's let the ROV settle in a little beautiful. bit. See what we're looking at. Thank you. Oh, Vasalia portalisi we have right here. And look at a uh, Tina 4. Oh, yeah, a Tina 4, dead center. Oh, that's. Okay, so oh um, I would call this on That's bottom. <laughs> Cydipid cinephore. Cydipid. Ooh. Yeah. So they're doing color corrections right now. Um, but once we settle in, we'll review the dive real quick. Oh, I didn't get that data. We are um, hitting the base of this uh, ridge here. Hitting, slowly approaching the base of this ridge here. Um, looking at the bottom, we're at 870 meters. We are going to go up this slope to some high points along the ridge. Ooh, we got a little fish. Looks like he's hunting in the coral. Right. Yeah, we have Kinda some deal. dead standing coral. Uh, that's promising for some living being around. And right dead center, I see a hexactinella called uh, Vasalia. It's actually one of our target species for the Aspire campaign. So we're just going to hang out for a few minutes, enjoy the view. Deania for the shark, we think Michael timed in, chimed in to say, Deania species, question mark. And that glass sponge, is, that's a vazella, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're just going to hang out this view for a few minutes while our pilots do shift changes. I've got a small jelly here, I think. There you go. Oh, yeah. A little bit like, on the like edge of our Yeah, three o'clock a screen. Ooh, There's a little jelly. Very nice. <laughs> I think that might be a, a small trachea medusae. Yeah. We can't get zooms right now because the ROV team is shuffling positions. A lot of the pelagic animals uh, live near the bottom because the bottom is comparatively meat rich. Mm -hmm. Lots of food sources around. And there are quite a number of jellyfish that are specialized. To, uh, called, we call them benthopelagic, to basically sometimes even sit on the bottom and then swim when they're feeding. And then uh, they're negatively buoyant, so wind up floating down and resting on the bottom. Oh, nice. I'd be afraid it's like the opposite of Icarus, where you get too close to the, <laughs> to the reef and get torn apart. <laughs> 
This remember so, like so sensitive. <laughs> the jelly that swam too close to the bottom. <laughs> Reverse Icarus. Reverse Icarus, yeah. Oh, I, I like the looks of this. Yeah, this is going to be a good dive. We just need yeah. to get everybody settled in and comfortable and ready to move. I mean, yeah. it, this this operation is extremely uh, difficult. But they make it look easy. But there's like six ROV pilots working at one time, and they're running two ROVs at the same time, on top of the fact that they're like 850 meters under the ocean surface right underneath a boat yeah and so a ship that's keeping in one place yeah. so that they can do this at the bottom so no no Here's another jelly here. It's like seven or eight o'clock oh, yeah. a screen. And it's the same, looks to be the same one we saw before. Mm -hmm. You can see that it has a nice red gut. That's so why do they have a red gut, Alan? <laughs> well, the story goes that the red gut uh, masks the uh, bioluminescent prey that accumulate in their stomachs. And why is it red? Uh, because then the light cannot penetrate that and escape. And if the, what's well, so the one thing that's hard for us to, to imagine while we're watching this view with everything lit up is that this is always dark, very little light mm -hmm. uh, will reach to this uh, place from the surface. And uh, these animals have to live in near total darkness. And red, red, as you pass through the water column, the color red disappears first. Yes. So at depth, red is actually a camouflage so it's a great way to hide your what you've just eaten when everything didn't well and a lot of stuff down here lights up mm -hmm. as you can imagine if you were to eat bioluminescent prey and you have a nice bright light in your stomach <laughs> and you are transparent <laughs> that might attract uh visual predators, predators. Yeah. All right, so coming into the screen here is one of our manipulator arms. And they are going to rotate it. And you'll see the color correcting card so that our video team is able to adjust the light temperature. So we can get the most accurate color. That's right. No sense coming all the way down here and mm -hmm. collecting bad data. My goodness. The best data we can get. All right. All right, they're about to fire the Niskin bottle. That's great. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Sample two. So we have just made our second environmental DNA sample.
Yeah. A lot of dead coral. There. Yeah, some of it looks like it's standing. You see this? Yes. It has like some relief in it, and mm -hmm. that relief is good for habitat for that small critters. It creates a lot of nooks and crannies mm -hmm. in there for other organisms. And this, I mean, it's not uncommon. It's normal for the base of a Lophelia mound to have dead rubble on it. That's how they um, form. That's how these Lophelia mounds form. Go for it. Go for it. We could use our extra one for it. What's the best choice here? We could, um, use, we could use our extra sample at this point. So, thank you, pilot. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. So, so to confirm, that was actually sample two. Did you get that, that that was sample? Okay. Mm -mm -mm. So we're uh, just doing a little color correction, finishing that up, and we have taken our second environmental DNA sample. That is essentially a sample of water containing uh, loose DNA or uh, sloughed off skin cells from the organisms that live in the surrounding water. And this is another method by which we can characterize these uh, cold water coral communities.
and we are color correcting still, so just be patient with us. Um, we will start moving shortly. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, we are going to land about 870. And then we are going to go, I guess that's east, west of slope. And then transverse over the top of these um, higher points on these mounds. Based on the bottom here, this Lophelia rubble, I'm expecting and hoping that we're going to actually have a living Lophelia reef at the top of these mounds, but, you know, we won't know until we get there. Um, we are doing six eDNA samples. We've already done two. Five eDNA samples, excuse Five me. Five eDNA. We've already done two. We're going to be doing another one midway through and another one at the end. And then we, we, we might do a random one, like if we're on top of a nice reef or one of our scientists ashore wants it. Um, wants to chime in. Um, uh, the top of the feature should be at 808 meters. And you've got about a 62 meter um, relief between the bottom where we landed and the top of these features. Anything I missed? Uh, no, I just wanted to say the specific percentage that we're looking for, the amount of Um, no, not yet. I think uh, once we start moving we'll f and figure out what's in this area, we might, you know, um, chime in and let you know. Uh, the Lophelia is a target for the Aspire campaign, as is a couple of the sponges that live on these Lophelia reefs. So I can imagine us collecting at least three things, um, but let's just wait and see. We don't have any specific targets for this specific dive. I am not shy about speaking up, so don't worry. I definitely will. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Vasilia? <laughs> Did you collect enough? You didn't collect any? Should we pick that one up? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the search for the yeah. and we searched the entire valley. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I think it might have just been a species of interest up there. Oh, okay. I don't know that for sure. Mm. So, I don't know if anybody shows that it's interesting. Sure so really yeah, well, the spire wants Vesalia. Oh.
Yeah, we're still doing our color corrections and settling in. We still have this field of dead Lophelia skeletons, mm -hmm. the coral, with a nice glass sponge there in the center, lower center. Mm -hmm. Yep, and now they're rotating this arm to face a different camera that points down that's not actually being broadcast to shore. Um, so that's what this, that's why it's twisted up in our view is because they're actually color correcting a camera that's above. Great, so they'll make our view right here. Color corrections for that camera as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's our sampling camera. That's why we need that's why we need it to be color corrected. So we can see the actual color of the samples when we collect them. So that's better than you know, them yellowed out or whatever. It just, it just. Was I muted? Sorry. Hey, Roland. Science. Can, do you want to um, explain why we color correct? Sure. Uh, check its blacks. It's a serious camera. You okay, co-pilot? Look at that oh, shark. There goes a shark. <laughs> So as I'm uh, doing these color corrections, uh, what we're doing is simulating as if we were under natural sunlight. Since we bring our own lights down here to the ocean bottoms and the color gets diffused through the water uh, pretty quickly. As you heard the scientists talking a little bit earlier about why the jellyfish gut is red. That's because red is the first wavelength, higher wavelength that gets uh, diffused quickest in the water columns. So by going through these uh, meticulous color corrections, what you saw on that chip chart, that allows us to uh, best uh, capture the video so that it's the same every single day, every dive. So we call that uh, the white balance or color correction. And here in this, on the ship, what you can't see on shore or a few pieces of test equipment. I've got a vector scope and a waveform monitor that lets me see uh, the many, many different signals that actually make up a video carrier. And I'm adjusting those individual signals, the gains, the blacks, the flares, the gammas, to be able to adjust to get all those color carriers perfectly aligned. So that way we get a true representation of what it is uh, while we're here on the bottom. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Are we almost ready to take off? All right.
We're ready to go. Awesome. Can you do some quick snap beat, snap uh, zooms on some of these Gorgonians and a good sh close-up shot of the coral rubble just so I can see what's living in there? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so we are ready to dive if you're just joining us. We have hit bottom, and we are moving forward. Uh, we are at the base of a ridge here at 865 meters, our max depth with 870. Uh, we're calling this dive reef tracks. We are about 170 miles offshore, um, and we should be going up about a 15 degree slope shortly, but right now we're at the base of this ridge and we're looking at uh, the Lophelia coral that has um, probably, hopefully, tumbled down from above because we're hoping to get at the top of this and, and see a giant reef, but we'll see when we get there. I see a bryzoan here, this little mesh thing at 9 o'clock. <laughs> Looks like we have some yellow sponges, maybe, some pink anthomastis, possibly, at noon. Let me see I see some solitary corals. Ooh, look, there's Lots like a blue, yeah, there's, blue sponge. Is it a sponge, yeah, mm -hmm. growing on top of that? Is it a uh, high lit? No. Oh. I'm blanking on it. I, I'm not sure that <laughs> sponge ID like that is possible <laughs> without having the sample in hand. Yeah, so there's lots of dead coral. It's been here for quite a while. That's why it's so dark. Looks like we have maybe an ophioroid. You can see its legs here at, at uh, 7 o'clock. Some little sponges. Ooh, we got solitary Ooh. cup corals. Yes. Well, that's pretty standard for this type of habitat. What's that? I have oh. no idea. Oh, there's Anthomastus. This is a strawberry coral. It's pretty small, only has three polyps out. There's another cup coral there. Lots of little things living in this. I mean, it's dead rub, all right, but... Yes, but it's, it's not it's dead at all. Life. Yep. You can see the encrusting white sponge there. Cool. Here's a dead cup coral here. You can see the, the calices or yes. the ridges that form inside the cup corals. Mm -hmm. That's actually how you identify them. Is by most, most of the time is by the size and shape of those ridges inside those cup corals. There's hundreds of species, so it's, they're pretty hard to ID. And part of what we're hoping to capture in the environmental DNA samples is a lot more of this diversity than we could uh, by collecting an individual mm -hmm. specimen. Yeah, and if you guys want to, oh, here we go. We might have a bamboo coral. So this is a Gorgonian right here at, what, 2 o'clock. Sparsed branches, and you can see the stripes. That's definitely a bamboo coral. Nice. Wow. Oh, you have shrimp or something on top of it? Or a crab? Looks like a crab arm. It looks like, yeah. A squat lobster. Squat lobster. Squat lobster. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You see the polyps out? Yeah, let's take a little look at that. Why not? Got some white sponges in the background too, and some more solitary cups. Do you know what that um, 
Bamboo coral is? I am not that's good genus? with yeah. bamboo corals, genus, and species. Yeah, that's Scott's right. on the line. I guarantee you he can tell us. I think Scott had to step away. Scott yeah. France. Oh, there we go. There's that uh, squat lobster popped over. I know. I'm quite interested in that squat lobster. We can get a zoom on it if you want. Yes. Can we go back to that? Oh. Yeah. Can we go back to the squat lobster, please? Oh, wow. So we, we do have a target of, what was it crabs or? or uh, Galatheids. Galatheids. Okay. Yeah, that, that are. Squat lobsters. Yeah. That are not humunida. Exactly. <laughs> the, not the big one. red one. So yeah. this one looks like it would be interesting Promising. to collect if it's possible. Yeah, even the great video there you will, go. will be a huge help. Look how cool he is. He is awesome. <laughs> Look how his, his front saying. leg is just tucked in that coral polyp. I yep. on. Saying. He's got these really fine pinchers in his chelate arms or his, you know, pincher hands for picking. So they pick things off of the coral, but then also things that float by? Yeah, they, he, I, he would, I would imagine he's picking stuff that's floating by. Mm-hmm. You can see those, those really fine hairs on his um, claws. Yeah. Oh, he's cool. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah, he's is tiny. It, is it too small to collect? Mm-hmm. Thank you, Pyle. So we are going to attempt to make our first specimen collection mm -hmm. of this dive after the two earlier environmental DNA samples. So science and shoreside, one of the things that we do when we're doing these samples, I'll actually change the quad split on stream three to be set up for what we refer to as sample mode. And that gives four different camera angles of the sample process as it's happening. Roland, this, I'm trying to get this quad camera screen up, and it's buggered.
Oh. Pilot, this is science. Can you turn on the lasers before we collect? Just so I can get a size on him. There we go. So our lasers are 10 centimeters wide. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Tiny little thing. <laughs> so this crab that we're looking at, the scalathioid, is part of a group that contains about 1,300 known species wow. and many, many that are not known to science yet. Mm -hmm. We'd have to have someone who studies these to tell us if this is a new species or not, because I sure as heck don't know. No. <laughs> Thanks, Roland. Our collection skid, which is located underneath the ROV. Um, we're going to end up using this suction hose, so the arm's going to reach out, grab that suction hose. They're going to turn on the suction, and they are going to suck up the um, galathead we are looking at. That's on this bamboo coral, and it's going to get put into one of these buckets. Um, this bucket's on a carousel. So with every sample we pull in, we only get one sample per bucket, and they rotate the carousel to bucket number two. Roger, thank you. All right. All right, so you can see our manipulator arm has reached over. Our, um, we have someone running the collection um, skid in the art from the ROV pilots. So they're going to pull this tube out. And attempt to suck up that little crab. Yep. It's going to be a tiny little crab. It's interesting, you know, where our eyes are so often drawn to the larger things. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the diversity of life is quite small. Galathioid, small squat lobster.
this, this takes a delicate hand, so we're going to just sit quietly and wait. <laughs> oop, oop. Doesn't want to go. The if you need to grab, if you need to grab that Carl to get him, that's fine. Go for it. Okay. Having a. Mm -hmm. Would be nice. Can, can you snap that branch off and just suck the branch up with the grab? Mm. Yeah. And if he's if he's gonna battle you and it's too difficult, we can we can leave him. It's number two. We better try. Okay. We, then we can we'll have the known association as well by collecting the coral as well. And I know some people out there who are very interested in <laughs> studying the bamboo corals. Yeah. So if and when these samples are collected, they will go back to the Smithsonian National mm -hmm. Museum of Natural History where they will be available by scientists around the world, uh, specialists uh, to study the organisms. Oh, yeah, that's it's fine. Completely fine. Could be, yeah. And that looks more like a hermit crab, though. I don't think it's the same species. So there's some discussion in the chat about uh, which group of these bamboo corals that this particular specimen belongs to. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's a, a clade of organisms uh, denoted as S1, according to Scott France. No, this rubble should be pretty um, loose. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, if you need to grab the rubble, man, go for it. Whatever's easiest for you. Yep. <laughs> we'll just have lots of associates. It's no big deal. There you go. Yeah, I say that now until I have to process till midnight. <laughs> That is great. Awesome. So great. Where are you headed for this with this sample? You going on the Starboard port? 
No, starboard what? Inner. Thank you. Starboard inner. Wow, that is beautiful close-up oh, nice. of this small galathioid crab. You can see the oh, little I hairs on his on yeah. his legs. Yeah, the little CT, right? Mm -hmm. You can see the coral polyps have closed up. Yeah. We disturbed them. So I think this crab is a little filter feeder. Mm -hmm. And who knows, this may be something that's new to science. Mm -hmm. So it takes a few minutes for the ROV pilots to kind of get situated and get their drawer ready to open up the bucket and put the sample inside. Yep, so if you're looking at the quad screen on view three, Video feed three, you'll see that and collection skid come out. So this, again, the skid is located underneath the ROV. And then we can see our collection boxes. And then just tuck it in there and close it up and we'll move on. And it's about to be dropped in the box. The skill involved in this always blows my mind. Mm -hmm. Did you not grow up playing video games? <laughs> not too many. <laughs> I think that's why the people in my generation are into ROV piloting. Uh huh. Because we all have video games. It's like a real life video game. And it's, it's pretty fun. Collection is successful. Yay, and collection. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So once again, that those samples will go back to the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History, where specialists will be able to study them, uh, identify them, determine if they're new species. And if they are new species, they'll be able to uh, describe them. It's sometimes a uh, long process. That was sample three. Sample three. Mm -hmm. And collection sample three. All right. All right. Thank you for collecting that. Yeah. All right, and um, we're ready to move forward if you guys are comfortable. Yep. So if you're just joining us, we um, just sampled our third sample. Our first two samples were water samples for eDNA. Um, this is Windows of the Deep 2021 on the NOAA ship Okeanos Explorer. 
Uh, we are at the base of a ridge at about uh, the 865 meters. Um, it looks like most of this is dead lophelia or standing dead lophelia. Um, we're going to be heading upslope uh, to a max depth, of, uh, min depth, excuse me, of 808 meters roughly on a slope of about 15 degrees. And we just finished sample collection number three and we're about to um, start moving along again. And we are out on the Blake Plateau, right. which is uh, a large uh, plateau off the coast of the southeast United States, uh, ranging essentially from Cape Hatteras all the way down to the Bahama Banks off the coast of Florida. The depth on this plateau is anywhere from 400 to about 1,200 meters. Mm-hmm. And it's over 100,000 square kilometers mm -hmm. in coverage. But on this plateau are a lot of features rising up from the bottom. And that's one of which we're exploring today. Yeah. Which has the promising, prom is promising looking for being a living Lophelia reef. But we won't know till we get there. I see this other Gorgonia, and I don't think that that's bamboo coral. That's some other species. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Always, and we can look nice. for associates again. Let's see if we can. Yes, it looks like another bamboo coral. <laughs> you can see the brown rings. This one's much more separated. Right. And evidently the branching pattern is quite important in their taxonomy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whether it's internodal or nodal, which is like the branch happens on that little brown tissue or in between, or between. the brown tissue, yeah. So. And then I'm sure the branching pattern also matters, mm -hmm. whether it's two-dimensional or three-dimensional. Mm -hmm. And then uh, sometimes you have to actually physically take the sample. Yeah, the sclerites, right? Yeah. And based on these volcano-like polyps, Scott France in the chat suggests that this is likely part of a group of organisms so far identified as clade D, which is essentially a name for, a clade is a name for a group of organisms that are almost closely related, related to each other than they are related to anything outside mm -hmm. that group. And what is that on the top? The little hairy thing? I'm not yeah. sure. Might just be schmutz. So this would be in the family Keratoceidae. Toeceidae, yeah. According to Scott. Sure, sclerites are um, mineralized little like spikes that the skeleton, that are in the skeleton, mm -hmm. that are the skeleton of this organism. They're embedded in the tissues and uh, may serve as a defense or for, for structure of the organism. Mm -hmm. And they're often used in the taxonomy of the individual species. Mm -hmm. Carito like I some, some uh, major pour in the background. Um, well, we have a volcano sponge too here at at, at two o'clock. Yeah. And we're gonna make some. We're gonna have so much stuff to look at. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't even moved. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need to keep moving. <laughs> mm. 
Yes. Like he's fishing oh, in there. Yeah. Nice. And some madripoor coral underneath him. Nice. Can watch him hunt. Looking around in the mm -hmm. crevices or trying to hide from us. Mm -hmm. One or the other. Yeah, so there's a sponge right there, dead center. If you could just give me yeah, a quick zoom on that guy. Hexactinellid? Oh, uh, very likely yeah. a hexactinellid for it's sure. It's a glass sponge. There's a cool ophioroid right there too. We have some small stalked ball sponges on the oh. rubble over here. Actually, I don't know if that is a, a, hex? a hexactinellid be because hexactinellids aren't uh, encrusting sponges, mm -hmm. and that does look like it's encrusting mm -hmm. there. It also has this thin film on it. Yeah. This is most so likely some kind of demo sponge, mm -hmm. exactly. Looks like there's a fresh dead Lophelia here standing still. Okay. There might even some, be some living Lophelia up in this little um, thicket. Oh, nice. Another jelly on the top. That, oh, yeah. I would love to get, can we get a good look at one of those? <laughs> snap zoom, guys. Oh, look at him. He's got lots of oh, tentacles. that is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. That looks to be kind of tracky Medusa, I believe. You can see it has all its tentacles deployed. This is uh, likely a species that is associated with the bottom. Again, with that internal red coloring. Mm-hmm. Now we've seen a lot of this here. It's it's uh, distinctive of the region. I hate to say it again, but is there any chance we could collect this animal? <laughs> <laughs> it's up to the up to the pilots if you want to. Yeah, I'm I'm down with it. Yeah. You keep I... keep him from getting too beat up because he's gonna be very fragile. Yeah. Is it? Mm -hmm. Let's see what they're going to say. Whoop. Yeah, obviously either one would be terrific. Not too long ago, uh, George Matsumoto and colleagues described, uh, they basically clarified what they called little red jellies uh, in the Trachea Medusa group. Mm -hmm. And this would sort of fit that general description, and so it should be possible to. But most of those were from the West Coast. Did you say trachea medusa? 
Yes, it's a trachea medusa. Very likely Rapallo nematidae. You're going to have to spell that one. Uh, <laughs> R-H-O-P-A-L-O-N-E-M-A-T-Today. Yeah, nice. See, I got uh, it. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Nope, go for it. No, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at him move. Boop. Oh, is he trying to run Boop. away? Boop. Boop. Behave, Jelly. All right, he's in. Fantastic. Um, what bucket did that go into? Thank you. That went into canister five. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Yeah, we need to start moving, I think. Yes. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Alan's like giddy over here. Well, yeah. It's awesome. I just I just know that good things are going to be done with these organisms mm -hmm. and help us understand yeah. the Billy Plateau ecosystem better. And the species in general, you know, the yeah. taxonomy in general. What is that? I got a That's, shark in the background yeah. there. Oh, no. Oh, and then there are more Vazelia over here. There's some of our targets yeah. over here on the yes. 3 o'clock. Those um, hexactinellid cups. They're a target for a spire. we got this cool shark. Look at him. A long face. That giant That's eye. Not. Looks like there's a little bit of damage on his uh, dorsal fin. Like he got bit or something. A little fight. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Really interesting. I'm glad we're getting a good close up of mm -hmm. it. Looks like a, a sponge behind him. Maybe some fresh dead Lophelia here. Lots of cup corals. Oop, you bumped into it, buddy. <laughs> We're blinding the poor thing. I'm confused Jeez. by a, <laughs> by our presence <laughs> in this normally dark yeah, pitch habitat. Black. Yeah, we've blinded them, I think, temporarily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. They have... Um, they have pores on their face that can detect uh, electromagnetic fields. Yeah, that's Vesalia. Right there, that's a nice yeah, one. Yeah, that is a beautiful glass sponge. Mm -hmm. And 
See the nice pores on it? Yeah. So there. It's very porous. Is, is Vazella? A target? Yeah. Yeah, it's a mm -hmm. target, but that's not, uh, I'm not asking to collect again. Yeah. I'm just. Look how neat. I can see the brittle stars on the outside. Mm -hmm. And this, the um, spicules, real yes. fine hairs on the outside of it. Yeah. Well, these glass sponge spicules, they're actually quite interesting. They have a, a organic core to them when they're first laid down, and they can actually uh, like serve like fiber optics and channel mm -hmm. light. And these skeletons of glass sponges are, have been studied by... Uh, you know, bioengineers to understand uh, the tensile strength as well as as uh, fiber optics. And they're silicate. Is that yes, correct? these are silica, silica dioxide. Mm -hmm. That's why they're called glass sponges. And that's up. do you guys have a temperature? Can we get a temperature read on this? What's the surrounding temperature? What are we looking at? 6.3? 6.3 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, there's a big temperature gradient there. That'd be like a... Mm-hmm. The thermocline. Okay. So it's just a, a different water mixing is causing this rippling effect. I guess so. That's it's interesting about the, the water that is here on the Blake Plateau. I think there are two main water mass sources. Mm -hmm. One that comes all the way from Antarctica. Oh, look at that. A little shrimp in there. A little shrimp living inside that glass sponge. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good place to be. Uh, <laughs> nice and safe. <laughs> yes. And then the salinity, what do we have for salinity? We have 35.0 and 35.1. So likely more of a temperature um, differential than a, than a salinity differential. But I've seen that rippling effect with either or. Yeah. We got lots of more bamboo coral over here. I saw bryzoan, that little mesh thing right at dead center. That's a bryzoan. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh. Pretty neat. I'd love to get a little, little look colonial at that. animal. These are called lace corals, mm -hmm. a common name. Yep, you can when you get real close you'll see the little polyps. So that's Ooh. not a No, it's not it's not stylaster. It's not stylaster. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's nice. Owen. So cool to me. You can see the little polyps in the so it's it kind of thins out at the front yeah. of the top, and they're real little tiny little holes. Yes, Megan McCullers in the chat room saying, "Yay!" <laughs> <laughs> so this footage is great. Mm -hmm. There's a gastropod to the left yeah. there. See a snail. Yeah, I can turn the lasers on. Zoom. Oh, yeah, so it's about five centimeter rhizoan. Oh, we've got a nice ophiuroid over here at three o'clock, too. Uh, we, I think I need to close my eyes and let them just speed up the shelf. Yeah. <laughs> so I can stop stopping them. <laughs> it's okay. That's all right. So much good stuff to look at. Mm hmm. We have this, uh, what's that, Pachystrelid? It's so this white sponge here. Oh. It's interesting that that uh, bryozoan colony had, had Fallen was sort in. of mm -hmm. facing Flopped down over. and maybe just fell over. Yeah. And Megan McCuller comments that based on what she's seen on previous dyes, the zoids are often facing down. Mm. So maybe that's its preferred orientation. It's 
funny it, to me that does look the bryozoan colony did look so much like a a stylast oh yeah they definitely do they look a lot alike they have, oh, both have that same like flat well depending on the species right mm-hmm. same flat branching pattern usually white mm-hmm. but when you get close to them you can see that the stylaster the stylaster is more calcareous and has little tiny holes mm-hmm. that the polyps pop out of whereas in the bryzoans it's more like rooms little cell yeah, rooms little, little chambers mm-hmm. there's another beautiful vazella there again mm-hmm. looks like we might have a bit of coral coming up again i'm seeing this temperature the temperature rippling yeah. above the reef we might be in an upwell so i think the max temperature from remembering correctly for lophelia is about 12 degrees celsius and we have they have the upwells bring a lot of cool water and food yeah yeah, so these these lophelia mounds, they're subject to greater temperature variations, mm-hmm. aren't they, than, mm-hmm. than most of the others that are out here on the Blake Plateau? Uh, I'm not sure as far. I mean, yeah, we do get ch- large changes in temperature, but it still has to be bef- between that, like, between 12 these. degree and 6 degree centimeter, I mean centimeter, Celsius, uh-huh. for them to, you know, grow. Yeah, I believe. I would it. imagine the shallow water ones get more temperature because i know the aculina reef at 300 feet can go from like 12 degrees to mm. you know 40 i was referring yeah. to uh, lophelia on the blake plateau oh, compared yeah. to other places where lophelia grows oh yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't that, that i don't know off the top of my head narrow temperature yeah. ranges on those mm-hmm. that's something i'd have to go hunting for yeah I think we got a pretty good idea of what's living in this rubble here. It's definitely yeah. uh, maintaining a lot of life. Yes. Got the lots diversity of, is very high. Yeah, we got lots of bamboo corals, some demo sponges. Vizalia. Oh, yeah. The Vizalia looks like the most common sponge at this depth. Yeah. And these bamboo corals. Yeah. Common I think too. So that Scott is suggesting that that whip that we just went by is something we hadn't seen yet. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Yeah, sure. Is it still possible? Yeah, it'd be great. I thought that was a bamboo coral. Let's see. Oh, is this another bamboo? Mm, I think so. But yeah, looks like it's got those. Yeah, and this is definitely. Scott suggests this is the third species of bamboo, bamboo coral, coral we've seen today. <laughs> You can really see the color, I mean, the the rippling in the water column. It's almost like hard to focus on the coral or so much of it. All right, it's yeah. like, there it goes. We've got another associate here who's this little squat lobster. Could be the same species. He has really similar chelate, yeah. chelate arms yeah. with the hairs on the end. And see the polyps are out. Yes. It's eight tentacles, which is where they get their name octocoral from, octocoralia. Each of those tentacles with the side branches. Yep. Eight arms on a tentacle. Or eight tentacles on a polyp. Yes. Yeah.
Scott France very much appreciates this great footage of this. <laughs> There's no branching. It's just one single stalk, looks like. Yes. You don't see much branching With on it. With very long internodes. Mm hmm I think we're ready to move on. Thank you. Here's a solitary coral over there. Okay, we are going to continue to move up slope here. Presently at a depth of about uh, 857 meters. And we are traversing uh, a lot of coral rubble that is has abundant life associated with it. Making our way up to the top of this ridge-like structure where we expect to find live uh, Lophelia coral. Let's see. So we have a, an eel on the top of the frame. So just joining us, we're on our first dive from Expedition EX-2107 by NOAA Ocean Exploration. This is Windows to the Deep 2021, and this dive one is called Reef Tracks, uh, where we are about 160 miles off the coast of Charleston, South Carolina at a depth of uh, approximately 860 meters. And we are traversing up this ridge-like structure and uh, examining it for life. We have taken two environmental DNA samples, just another way for us to try to characterize the marine communities on the Blake Plateau. And we have also collected uh, a nice squat lobster with its associated bamboo coral, and then also a, a, a jellyfish that seemed to be associated with the bottom. Let's see an eel. Great. I suppose once we've made some headway, we can focus in again. It's a nice large, there's a sponge, volcano type shaped sponge, and then also a large 
Sponge to the top right. Let me take a, a zoom in on that larger, or actually both of those sponges, one after the next if it's possible. Just get better footage to help someone identify. Oh, you're so good. Oh yeah. Just be good to see the animal that's just to the upper right of that sponge. Yeah, it's sort of a reddish purple. It's a deep color. Close up on that would be nice. Not sure what Oh, that's interesting with the water mixing. It's really difficult to see. Ah. Scott France informs us that was a that's a soft coral. So, so. And Andrea Quattrini tells us that is Pseudo Rifa nigra. Pseudo Drift Rifa nigra. Continue on, please. Yeah, we are doing so. All right, so we're coming up the slope a bit. Looks like we have some, maybe hexactinellids, some more hexactinellids. Off to the upper right there, mm -hmm. yes. Could be, could also be, um, I'm making calls too early. <laughs> i just guessing at this point, they're too far away. I'm making some good progress now. Mm -hmm. I've seen these white, flat, disc-like hexactinellids before. I don't remember their name though. What do we got here? What is that? Can we zoom on this little tuft that's center screen? Yeah. Yep. It's a white, white tufty thing. Yeah, no worries. You got another Hydra Medusa? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's nice. They really are characteristic of this. Hey, did somebody just come on the line? Yes, this is Christina Diaz. Hi, Chris. Hi. How are you? Yay. <laughs> are you watching from California? Christina Diaz. I, I am watching. I'm watching. 
Hello. Hi. So happy to can you yes, yes, from Moss Beach, California. Yes, the call. Can you turn down your um, audio on the on the um, video for me? Because I can hear your feedback. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Nice. Let me see which one I turn down. The... Okay, I will. Oh. There's a hydroid growing to the left there. Mm-hmm. Is it coral? Large here? plumularoid hydroid, mm-hmm. I believe. So. No, primnoid. Primnoidy is what Scott's calling us. Yeah. Oh, look at the little polyps in it. How neat. <laughs> very so fine. Do you spot any associates on this? I don't I don't see any. No, oh, he's lonely. <laughs> All right, we're good whenever you guys yeah. are ready. Would you like to take a look at the sponge that's sort of to the left sure. of this? Especially since we had with Chris on the line, Christina Diaz on the line. That is a stylaster. Oh, nice! A different branching pattern. So yeah, here we go. We got a sponge, Chris, coming up. I think you're probably on a few second delay, so you may not see it for a few seconds. So if you just hang out here, so Chris can get a good idea. What do you think, lady? Oh my. Get close. It seems similar to the one you you saw before. Maybe massive uh, with those um, osculs in little mounds all over the top mm-hmm. surface. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this <clears throat> pro a geodia. Oh, geodia. Geodia. Geodide. Mm-hmm. So geodias are, are really interesting because so, uh, that's what it looks uh, to me. Okay. Awesome. So we're calling this geodia. I think she said to the family, Geo de Day. Geo, Geo de Day. Yeah, the family Geo Ide. Geo Ide. That's, yeah. that's what it looks to me. Just the, the, the texture of it. There seems to be some, like, spiking little spicules around. You know, looks like that hairy style and those osculs on the top. Similar to the one that you just saw before. Okay. And uh, I just thank you so much. And <laughs> very exciting to have you. Exploring the deep. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for calling in. It's super helpful. Thanks, Chris. Sponges are so tough. So. I will yeah. come in and out. Yeah. <laughs> sure, whenever you can chime in, feel free. Those little mounds that, that uh, Christina was referring to on the, the sponge, those are the X current openings. Mm-hmm. The outside of the sponges are full of tiny pores. And they. Uh, Organisms have cells that beat and create a water flow that moves through the organism, and then they have other specialized cells which capture small prey items from the water, Mm -hmm. bacteria, single-celled or other single-celled organisms. Now, usually we and we like to try and target um, the the uh, carnivorous ones too. Yes. So they're they're pretty cool. (laughs) The the sponges that break the sponge mold Mm -hmm. (laughs) and don't. Conform to the normal sponge mm-hmm. feeding behavior. Behavior, exactly. What's that red so thing? Is like that another soft coral? Probably, yeah. That's the anthomastus. It looks like we're coming up on this top of this rise here. I think so. It's maybe getting to the point where we're going to sort of turn right and mm-hmm. then traverse across the top of the reef. Or the top of the ridge. We got some standing dead. It's the, the um, coverage of the standing dead seems to be oh. increasing a bit Is until that? we're at the top, where it's kind of like totally flattened out again. But it looks like a typical bioherm, right? Where you have this compacted sediment inside all these dead um, coral skeletons, 
and over thousands and thousands of years of growth of coral and then the death of the coral fills in with sand and that creates these bioharms and on the top of the bioharms is where the living coral is located so along the sides it's really common to see these like swaths of Fe- dead fields and rubble. Of rubble yeah like it's nothing nothing wrong with the reef this is just how it grows yeah I think people, you know, and I'm sure, you know, don't study this stuff. You look at it and you're like, oh, my God, the reef's wrecked. You're like, no, it's not wrecked. It's fine. It's normal. There's lots of rubble. It's a good sign. That means as we move up, we'll probably find uh, living coral, hopefully. And, and a lot of the shallow work I've done, when you find the, the rubble, the rubble mm-hmm. spots, there's often a lot to be found uh, in and amongst the rubble. And the same is true here. Can we look at this? It looks like living coral at 3 o'clock. This, it might not be alive, but it looks like it could be. Yep. See the whiter one? I guess it's kind of pink. Orange. Just a snap zoom. We've, I just want to see if it is living. It might be Inalapsamia. All right. It zooms. This is when everything gets so exciting. <laughs> you start seeing everything. Yeah. Uh, it might be dead. Oh, nope. We got living polyps there. Nice. And that's Lophelia? It's either Lophelia or Inalapsamia. Let's see. I think it's Lophelia. It's not very attached very well. It's able to move around a bit. It's moving around in the current. Mm-hmm. That's not normal. <laughs> it's probably broken off. Yeah, we got a little. What is that? It's a little. It looks. It's not a. Gorgonian. A Gorgonian. Thing. It's awful. It looks little. awful, like uh, calcareous. Calcified. Neat. All right, we're good. We can move on. Thank you. I think that's probably. It. Oh, it's a stylaster, the little, the little white. The little white one. Yeah, with the beady balls, the beady ball tips. Cryptelia. Thought I saw a couple barnacles on it as well. Yeah, I saw the barnacles. Lepos. Yeah, Andrea says in Elapsamia too, but she wasn't 100% sure either. Lophelia tends to be really white, okay. and that's awful. Like, you've got, like, a lot of color to it. It's, like, pinky and yellowy. And you can also kind of tell by the direction of, that the polyps grow off the main um, branch. Uh-huh. These are kind of pointed up or out. I see. Like, they're more... What was the little guy? I didn't see it. I didn't see it either. I'm glad we got that jellyfish when we could. Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) Says the jellyfish guy. (laughs) Sweet. More vazella. Mm -hmm. Large... Base-like glass sponge on the left there. Seems to be quite common on this. Not densely, but there. Here and there, all along this transect so far. Yeah, that's neat. What is that? It it might just be a hydroid. Can we look at a snap zoom um, at... It's going to be tough. It's about 7 o'clock. 
Yeah, and there's some pink cup corals over here and something hairy. Um, so if you just yeah back up and swing a little to the left, I can. Okay, it's about at nine now. Yep, and now it's center screen. Yes, yeah, so just zoom in a bit and I'll. Of course, now I've lost it. <laughs> oh, I see it. Okay. Good eyes. It's a little below. Um, below. Now it's now it's closer to like seven o'clock, six o'clock. Yeah, six o'clock. And then we're at like dead center right there. Yes, give me a good zoom on that. It's likely a hydrite. It could be a primnoa, though. It's a really fine, feathery. Good. So we're doing well timing-wise. Mm -hmm. More time to collect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're no, looking, not every job. We're looking at this hairy, yeah, it looks like a primnoa here at three. Um, this, that thing, yeah. Yeah, so... Just to yeah. the right. Yeah. That's nice. And there's, you see this slime down here? That's a bacteria matting. We might have a crinoid at six. Really fine. There's also um, nipthids. Yeah, yes. that's what you're looking at. Yeah, it looks like a primnoa to me. Okay. Yeah. Uh. You can see all this bacterial film. See this mm -hmm. cyanobacteria? There's a nice cup coral behind it. Ooh, Looks like somebody's arm in the back. There we got a, a furoid. And nepthea, this brown soft coral. Yep. Uh, yep. Let's see if we can see. Yeah, neat. See the crown of tentacles. Mm -hmm. Now are those, is, are the noctocoral, do you see? Yeah, it's, it's a, yeah, it's not a coral. I it it, uh, it would be usually they're you know hex corals are hard, um, but they're hard to count sometimes. Yeah, this is cool with this white. Oh, that's a nice thing. looking. That's probably a sponge. Sponge at the base of that. Yeah, like a little spiky sponge. Okay, we're good whenever you guys are. <laughs> I need to get out of there. It's fine. I got lots of ophiroids. See the brown nipsids? Yeah. And we got a rat tail over here. Yeah. Scott France was wondering if that might have been a, a hydroid, which is sort of what it was it looking be. for me, too. But I, I was having difficulty uh, with the scale. But uh, oh, is it that certainly why? could have been, uh, yeah, it could have been hydroid. A, a hydroid. Which would definitely not be an octocoral. So it's totally yes. different what f class yep. of animal. A whole different class. This mm -hmm. is definitely the hydroids. There goes. What'd you say? Shrimp floating by. Nice. Oh, I saw a pink shrimp over here, too. Oh, yes. We want to make sure that we're checking out the fishes as we go by as well. And can you guys look at nine? At uh, let's see, eleven, ten o'clock. There's a white stalk over on the side. That is a sponge. And when Chris can hear me, um, this volcano sponge. I'm sure she can give me an ID on that. Yeah, that guy. She's on a bit of a delay, so it might take her a minute to chime in. Hello. Hi, what do you Hello, got? I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I saw before a vasella. I don't know if you, if, when you were showing them. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, the white, kind you know. Globe. No, no, the white, there's a yeah, white I tube. Ah, uh, no. Okay, I haven't. Um, maybe I'm in the, uh, right now, is it that, like a long mm -hmm. tube mm -hmm. that tappers over yeah. the top? Yeah, like one of the volcano sponges. It's, yeah, thicker at the bottom. We have to, in, in our work that we did for the Southeast USA, we had two similar sponges. One, 
was uh, Neo Petrosia. Neo Petrosia. The other, um, but let me let me look uh, from the close. What was the other one? Neo Petrosia and what? Uh, Neo Petrosia. Petrosia. It's a new species. Oh, new species of Petrosia. Neo Neo Petro Neo Petrosia, but um, I have to look at if the oscule is in the tip. It has like a elongated, very thin membrane. Mm hmm. Hard but thin. The other one, uh, let me look at our guide. It's a uh, from from Astrophorid. Astrophorid. I, I while you we get close. Astrophorid is the group that the geodias belong mm -hmm. to. So yeah, if we could get a zoom on this sponge, if that's possible. And I saw that like was it Pleioticus? The or similar to Pleioticus? I don't. It was a. The red royal red shrimp mm -hmm. with the long swimmerettes that had swam by earlier. Uh, I didn't want to interrupt Chris though, so I let it go. Looks like so uh, the couple comments in the uh, chat room about potentially if we were to find the small polyped octocoral again, that okay. it might be worth collecting. No problem. Maybe no problem. We'll see. Well, see how yeah. it goes. <laughs> Depends. Yeah, is that another one? That looks. I think oh, that's a. That's definitely a hydroid, hydroid. on the left there. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. F focusing on this white volcano. Yes, so you can see that it's solid all the way to the top. So it's the it's. The, I'm, I'm just need to open the guide because it's a genus of um, astrophoric that I. You know, it doesn't come from the top of my mind. Let me just uh, get it, okay? I will let you guys the name. I will let you know the name uh, as soon as I find it. Yeah. Hey, sorry, Chris. I missed what you said because we were doing op stuff over here. What, what, were you, what were you talking about? Ooh, another shrimp. Is it possible to look so at the... By the, by the case, it's not, a, it's not the Neopetrosia, the other genus, and a Sophorid. And I, I don't have it in my in my mind right now. I'm gonna find it for you, and I will let you know. Okay, thank you. And then Alan wants to take a look when we're done with this um, sponge. Alan wants to take a look at this hydra because it looks like it might have reproductive structures. Yeah, structures on it. Exciting, so exciting. Look, you got another hexactinellid here. Right? Ooh, that is a beautiful small hexactinellid and look. a small uh, crinoid. Yeah, right look at your it. crinoids, yeah. Yeah. And then just to the left, oh, okay, yeah. Isopod or something? Amphipod? You can see the hydroid sticking up left of the sponge that it has uh, its yeah. reproductive structures. They call them gonathiki down the, the main axis of the stem there. And uh, so that's actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, so there's this hydroid here at 9 o'clock that's just sitting right next to it. Let me get a quick zoom in on that. With little white bumps down the center. Thank you. We're getting that water rippling too again yeah. in the temperature differentials. Doing a late adjustment. There we go. So these hydroids are actually related to to, to the jellyfish group and many Hydroids, that's the name for the benthic colonial structure uh, that we're seeing here. There's a lot of different polyps, but they're very tiny, much tinier than typical, uh, than the cnidarian polyps we've been looking at. And they have uh, different kinds of polyps. Some of them are specialized for reproduction. And all the little white bumps that you can see along the central axis here are the reproductive structures of this species of hydroid. Nice. Um, yeah. This one does not have a jellyfish in its in its life cycle, uh, but many hydroids do. 
And, um, but that's where the gametes are produced. Uh, so they, do they, are they a spawning species? Uh, or are they those the, will, like, those will, will uh, turn into the small embryos. They'll, mm-hmm. the, they'll, and then they'll, they will uh, creep take away off. a little bit. Yeah, take off and, and, and grow somewhere else. And Looks that, like I we think have there's a little, little amphipod yeah. or something <laughs> on on one of the one of the branches, side branches to this hydroid. Yeah. Yeah. Thank right. you. And, then, and then we are science. done yeah. with this guy. Whenever you guys are ready to move on. And we have another one of these royal red shrimps at the top, it looks like. Um, can we, yep, can we chase this shrimp down? He's at 10 o'clock. I guess this is his Pleioticus, but I'm not 100% on it. And I don't think Mary's on the line to correct me. So this looks to me like a royal red shrimp. And there's actually a fishery out here for them. Um, we are outside the HAPC, so this is open. You can see his long swimmerettes. Can't really get a good shot of him. He's running away. There you go. He's really armored. He's about maybe 15 centimeters long, 20. This is a really long antenna. There's, it looks like another uh, bamboo coral. You can see as cool he swims in the water. We're good whenever you guys are. Hello. We got some more of this compacted rubble. All right, we're gonna make our way up this hill. Some maybe possible uh, bamboo corals ahead of us. Mm-hmm. They're like furry ones.
Mm-hmm. Go for it. What did we miss? Mm. This one's got quite a bit of tan coloring. There's a little rat tail again at nine. That's a nice gorgonium. I think it's probably a black, I mean a bamboo coral. I think I'm seeing nodes, but maybe not. Classic bamboo coral, says Scott. He said for sure. All right, we're good whenever you guys are ready. likely karyatosis that that bamboo coral was that we just passed this is the genus so if you're just joining us um, this is uh, the Okeanos Explorer windows to the deep 2021 we are diving on the Blake Plateau, which is about 160 miles east of Florida. Um, and at depth, our max depth today was 870 meters. We're floating at about 845 right now. Um, we have to get to, we're trying to get to about 808 meters deep um, as we float up this ridge, which looks like it's either a... Um, Sorry, it looks like it's um, possibly going to end up being a lophelia reef at the top, but right now we're just seeing the compacted rubble in the bottom. Yep, there's a cool fish up at off at 11, just one off screen. There we go. It's chimera, maybe? <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, Chim Chimera CF Monstrosa, Andrea says. So it's a relative of the shark. Most sharks can't move their pectoral fins. This guy's pretty flappy, though. Nice. Thanks, guys. 
Oh, Andrea thinks that might be a new species. She says it's similar to monstrosa, hence the CF. That's what that, sim that's what that means in Latin, CF. So we use that a lot for um, species that we're not 100% sure are exactly the species we think they are. They're just similar or close to it. And she said this is a very attractively patterned one. A nice patterning on the side. You see this slope is really this compacted lophelia. And we've also a lot of habitat, it seems. We don't really have um, a lot of uh, hidey holes. But when we get close, there's still lots of animals. So like we have more bamboo corals and the vaselia, which is this hexactinellid cup sponge we're seeing a lot of. Yeah, it might yeah, it looks like the top of this mound ahead of us. Or this localized mound, I guess. There's some more mounds to the east. No, sorry, to the right of screen. Which way we're facing. We're facing south. Another bamboo corals up here. That one looks like it's toppled. Mm -hmm. More of this rat tail. I think this is Netzumia, if I'm remembering correctly. These both look toppled, don't they? Hmm. Yeah, it looks like it, it looks like it broke almost and then kept growing. Oh, Scott says toppling is a hazard when you live in the rubble. All right, it's loose loose rubble. It's really easy to get moved around. Looks like we have more primnoids here, these little fan. They look like feather feathers attached to the bottom. Or type of coral. Or gorgonian. Nice pile here of uh, standing dead corals. Is it? it might have been um It might have been a cup coral. Right, back from lunch, and 
back to the best day, one of the best days of my life. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much. Yeah, this is a great subject. At the bottom, I think there's a white sponge growing or tunicate maybe. And then as you go up, that is an interesting looking sponge. Then we have the octocoral colony. And then on the tips of the upper tips of the octocoral colony, I saw there were quite a number more of. This is Plumerella. And it has some. At the very top of that colony, if you go in, you can see that there. Yes. Yes. You can see there's another cluster of, you can see there's, a, looks to be a little shrimp holding on to the ends of one of those branches and then uh, more uh, sets of uh, hydroids taking advantage of the dead skeleton and living there. You can look, yeah, you can focus in on that shrimp. I think it has uh, eggs on its body. Just holding on with all its might. Oh, it's a mycid shrimp on there. It was carrying its embryos. Oh, and it was in a brood chamber. <coughs> Thank you, Scott France. So I hope to. Is, is that another one of the volcano uh, sponges near the top? top right now. We have had a request in the chat from a couple of the sponge people to consider collecting that sponge. <coughs> Hi, Th Alan. Thank you, Pilot. Hi, Hi Chris. You. How are you? <laughs> Pretty good. I'm sorry that I promised you guys to come back with the name of what we saw before. That might be this long, long tube as well. Uh huh. And um, since we've revised um, recently some materials from Southeast USA marine protected areas, and uh, the one that we saw before is Characella. Yes, let's take a look at this sponge. Yeah, so if you see from the closeness, it might be the same. And, and yeah, it is. Um, well, it looks, it looks a, a little different. This, too. this does yeah, look a little bit a different. different now, is this something you think that would be interested to collect? Yes, it looks. Yeah, yeah yes. But it's different from the one we saw before, which was much smoother. Mm -hmm. You can see here the stuff uh, is more ornamented. Uh, so this might even be an exactinelli. I don't know what you think. Could this be an exactinelli? It could be. It's a growth form that I don't necessarily recognize, although I'm not sure what it looks like on the other side. Yes. Uh, could we check the lasers? I'm curious how large this is. Oh, there we go. So it's about 
a little less than 10 centimeters across at the base. Uh, so it's a fairly large sponge. Um, it, Chris, is this a potential collection target? I would say yes. I've never seen it. Um, it's different from the previous one. Uh, and, you know, we don't even know maybe if it's a it or a, a skeleton. So I think it could be definitely a source of discovery. Okay. Um, if we could make a collection, it would be terrific. Thank you very much. So this sponge, we're not, we're not sure even what class it belongs to, whether it's a hexactinella glass sponge. So Chris Bronco in the chat room is also about the, excited about the possibility of collecting this sponge. Is this the first collection of the cruise, uh, Alan? Uh, this would be our um, fifth collection on this on this dive so far. We took uh, two eDNA samples. Um, uh -huh. So those were water samples. One on the way down at 500 meters and the second one at the beginning of this transect. And uh, then we collected a, uh, a bamboo coral with its associate galathioid um, squat lobster. And then we collected a beautiful uh, ropalonomatid jellyfish that uh, we had seen several times at the beginning of this dive. And now we're working on collecting this uh, sponge, which is either a glass sponge, hexactinellida, or the uh, more common uh, and more speciose group, the demo sponges. So we can see collection going in here, and this would be our fifth collection of the day. I'm not sure how hard this is going to be.
and we'll soon see if this is a spongy sponge or a harder sponge. It looks spongy. I'm I'm not sure, but I do I do believe it's going to be more of a soft sort of a squishier sponge than brittle. Yep, it was soft. Nicely done. And I'm sure you got some associates in there. I saw some hydroids growing near the base of this sponge. Oh, there they go. <laughs> uh, there still could be some associates with this. like got some dead lophelia collected with this So we're just making this collection of this sponge. This would be our fifth collection of our first dive in this expedition, EX2107. So this is going into bio box. Port inner. Thank you. And it's in the box. Yay. Success. Someone new come on the line? Uh, pilot, this is also the time, this is about halfway through, where we could take uh, the third eDNA, the third water sample collection. going to take the third environmental D DNA collection uh, at about this time. So if it's a convenient time to do it, it would be terrific.
Yes, please. Yeah, we collected a, a large sponge that's probably a glass sponge, but it might be a demo sponge. Um, I did not write that. All good, thank you. Success. A set marker, so something that all organisms have. And then we will sequence those markers and uh, get a feel, then a sort of a genetic signature for, uh, for what sort of organisms are in the area. So it's almost like genetics of the population that lives there, like a collective. Yeah, it's like a, a sample. And so mm -hmm. some of those will be able to match up with uh, organisms that have been collected in the past and have already been genetically characterized or what we call barcoded. Mm -hmm. And then some of those sequences won't match up to anything. And that'll help us understand uh, basically the more of the scale of the unknown what mm -hmm. we what we're missing still uh, and the reason it's important to know that is because these environments are so large and complex there are many many different players and uh, we need to know the players to sort of get a better more holistic understanding of how the, the whole system works together mm -hmm. Keep moving, and then we can. Are we getting close to the? I'm not really sure. Where top we're of at. this ridge structure or not? Mm 
Yeah, it's a nipthid. So strawberry coral. I'm sorry, anthomastus. My brain is post lunch. <laughs> post lunch brain. Oh, above that is is um, is the nipthid. The soft coral above it. You can see it attached. This primnoid here. This large thing. That's yeah, that's the foot of it. Yeah. Uh huh. And then it blooms up. Yeah, that's the nipthid. And again, a large branching hydroid mm -hmm. in there. On a, towards the left. You can see them waving in the current. Yes. So that means the current's coming from the south. It's mm. coming from the south. Mm -hmm. There's your solitary hydroid top right. Oh, really? I'd like to see that solitary hydroid top right. Oh, this here. Oh, yeah. This little brown yes. stalk. Just behind the, the white octocoral. Mm -hmm. There's a nice crinoid, too, in the, at noon. There's a lot of stuff in this little spot. Ooh, and even a, like a little hermit crab right on that gorgonium. <laughs> yeah. Little guy. Seems like every time we zoom in, there's a lot to see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Gives us stuff to talk about. Let's see. Yeah. He might even have some living hard corals behind it. There's some more nepthias over here on the bottom and on the sides. You can see the pinks. There's quite oh, a few yeah. of them, six or seven. There's some living lophilia on the left. Maybe an elapsamia on the left. There's also some bryzellans at the bottom. Can we look at that bryzellan? Let's see. That's at 4 o'clock. Now it's at six o'clock. Yeah, it looks like a mesh. There you go, right, right, a laser, right there. Now, now, do you know if 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 this has been collected? I don't know. Oh, really is nice. Yeah, a little lacy yeah. guy. Mm -hmm. With this nice close up, you can see the little the rooms. individual little. Mm -hmm. There's a little critter that lives inside each of those, and they're actually like more like a crustacean, right? Yeah, they have a nice uh, crown of tentacles, mm -hmm. and they can come out and uh, feed. They move very quickly, and then they can pull, pull themselves up. back inside oh. their their little homes. Megan is saying that hydroid could the hydroid. I guess she's talking about the single stalk one mm -hmm. with the with the feather head yeah. could be angliophenia anglia Agl anglophenia anglophenia yeah, definitely could be nice you can see lots of primnoids and living on the mm -hmm. surface here looks like we might have a cool crinoid big large one big with big um arms let's see that's uh how about noon if we can snap zoom to noon above laser. 
Yep. Oh, oh, it's out of screen now. Oh, there's a shrimp, though. Nice. <laughs> Hi, bud. There we go. That's what I'm looking at. Right there. There you go. Yeah, well, there's a large white. There we go. There's a crinoid there. Can you match it? He's sitting on a bamboo car. You see the bamboo? This, this is what the bamboo looks like when the flesh is stripped off. So you can really see those nodes. Yeah. And Carl's, I mean, and the um, inner node mm -hmm. sections when the flesh is gone. So that little piece is dead. But there's a crinoid with the long pinules at the end. That's a nice feather star. It's a type of camatulid. Okay. I think it's, that's not David Astor. It's a shame Chuck's not on the line. It is a lot of coral rubble, mm -hmm. and it makes you wonder where all this coral rubble's coming from. I know. more of those bamboo corals too. Let's see. Mm -hmm. So we're going up this slope here and starting to see like this dipping right in the topography yeah. really locally. Um, and we'll recap, right? This has been a while. Yeah. Um, so if you're just joining us, welcome. This is the Okeanos Explorer and we are on the Windows of the Deep 2021 cruise. Uh, let's see, we're about 160 miles off the east coast of Florida near Jacksonville um, on the Blake Plateau. We are diving these uh, this ridge with a bunch of mounds on it. We're hoping are going to end up being living Lophelia mounds, which is potentially possible considering how much Lophelia rubble's here. Um, the depth when we hit bottom was about 870 meters, our shallowest point on this dive is going to be about 808 meters or about halfway through. Mm -hmm. um, We're going to do a total rise of about 60, 62 meters on a slope of about 15 degrees. Um, let's see. This whole feature is about five kilometers long, so we're just exploring about 800 meters worth of it. We are on, what, our sixth sample? Uh, yes. We are our seventh. Sample. We have we have collected six so far. Yeah. Three of those are environmental DNA samples, water, and uh, and we've also collected a sponge, a jellyfish, and then also a, a, and a pair of organisms and associated uh, bamboo coral with its uh, galathioid uh, associate uh, squat lobster. So we have more chambers to fill if we want. <laughs> oh, was there a squid? I missed the squid. At zoom, yeah, we've got another rat tail on here. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Again, we got, yeah, these water ripples from probably temperature differentials. Looks like, what, 8.4 at the Sirius and 6.9 or 7 yeah, degrees? About seven. You can see these little pink dots are tiny cup corals. They're growing on the sediment. Or really, probably the rock, I mean, the coral rubble. 
And we're, it looks like we're getting some more standing live coral up top. Now, now Steph's getting excited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Was that an octopus? Oh, oh nice. Very good spot. Come out, man. Have an octopod in there. Let's see its and a couple of arms. I see two or three arms there. I can see his. Oh, there he is. Uh oh. Hi. Nice. Look at the eye on him. Nice. Oh, if this my, is if great. Mike Vecchion is on. I bet he knows the name of this guy. I'm sure he will. But I'm not sure he's on. But if we get good footage of it, he'll be able to... Look at it later if he's not here. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get lasers when you guys get a chance? Okay. Oh, okay. So he's about 10 centimeters, maybe. Yes, Megan, he's very cute. <laughs> kind of looks like a squeaker toy. It's <laughs> big, giant eyeballs. <laughs> Giant eyeball mm -hmm. saying, where did all this light come mm -hmm. from? Blind. They can actually taste using their suckers, which is like the coolest thing ever. So he's walking around sensing his environment, probably looking for food or hiding from us. I'm not really sure. <laughs> yes, he, has, he tucks his arms down in the holes in between the corals and search for stuff to eat oh look at the membrane between the arms is really clear mm -hmm. let's see if we'll catch something we'll see what this octopus can teach us mm -hmm. well doesn't seem to be bothered by the uh the hydroids. <laughs> right, they usually sting. Yes. Show us the good stuff. Mm -hmm. It's all good stuff. <laughs> we can hang out with him all day. I'm fine with that. Oh, oh, where are you going? Really nice. I'm getting an idea how far away we are when they zoom out. And the zoom on this thing is ridiculous. It's so good. Cameras are great. Mm -hmm. So he's not really bothered by us because he's like ridiculously far away. <laughs> yeah, probably just aware of us. Mm -hmm. Right, thanks thanks like, for that great footage. Ooh, we got some living coral up here. There's that Neopetrosid again that Chris thinks might be a new species up ahead. That's at uh, noon. Yeah, the, the volcano sponge. Mm -hmm. um, they were wondering about the possibility of look, collecting that. I'm okay with it if we think it's new. I don't yeah. think there's anything wrong with that. Um, since we've come across it again, and it's quite characteristic, and it might be new, I, I think it would it. be a good collection target. Okay. Thank you so much. Hello, my friends. I'm here. Hi. You. <laughs> you, How are you? Good, hon. Are you calling this Neopetrosid or something else? Well, you know, when we got close, we could see the that the oscule is... It's not differentiated, so I think this is the characella, C-H-A-R-A-C-E-L-L-A. -L -L -A. It's, it's an undescribed species of this rare Pacastrelide genus. Yeah, Pacastrelide. It belongs to the large Pacastrelide, yeah. Uh, when you meet, you, you're going to find probably the Neopetrosa, but the Oscar is very different. It's like a thin, prolonged... Um, 
um, membrane. Yeah, it has like that it's membrane rim on the on the, on the top. Uh, okay. Yeah, they're incredible uh, fish. Looks, we get a good look at that fish in there too. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, look at, oh, wow. <laughs> that is his <heat> sponge. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I just terrible with these fish. I'm very curious what it is, though. Is it, is it a... It has a long, yeah, long barbel. long pan on the fish make it easy for people to identify mm -hmm. someone can count the scales right <laughs> <laughs> complete their meristics it looks like it's related to laminema but i don't oh I don't it's beautiful one. it's a really beautiful fish Um, Chris, can we just grab a chunk of this sponge, or do you think we need to get, like, a big chunk of the sponge? Like, almost all of it. I don't know how deep it goes inside that coral pile. So we just take the, the tube off. Is that good? Yes, that would be okay. It's a large sponge. It might break off once you collect a piece, but I guess that's... So we expect it to... Ex was to have it. And we expect it to kind of be more crispy than rubbery? It's actually very hard. It's hard sponge. Hard sponge. Okay. And up the area, yes, it's a hard sponge. Okay. Who's that? What's pink on the top left there? Some kind of critter. Yeah, you can just... Yeah, you can just take a chunk off a tube. You don't have to get the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sh it sh it should be like pretty crunchy or hard, so it might just break, snap. Then again, it might yank an entire pile of coral up. So I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. This is seven, right? Yep. Because six was a water. Yep. So you can imagine that we are logging everything, all of our collections, as we get them. All right, here comes so our arm. Seeing them with all the video, and oh. as well as all the environmental data at the time of collection. <laughs> Oh, it's actually quite rubbery. It's softer than expected. Mm -hmm. It's probably fine, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a big chunk. Definitely. Whoop. There you go. You can see the tube goes all the way down into the base. Yeah. Wow. Nicely done. That was quick and easy. I say that. Not being the one in control of the arm. Yeah. <laughs> he made it look quick and easy. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can zoom if you want and get a good good picture of it. It was really that top rim that we were looking at. So if you can, like, turn it so we can see the, the hole at the top. Yeah, because one, one of the distinguishing characteristics Chris was saying is that 
Um, one of these has this really fine. Oh, is there something in there? Oh, it's just the liquids. Yeah. It has a really fine membrane that goes across the top rim. Uh, this one is lacking that, so that's a m most likely um, petrosian. Is that right, Chris? No. But possibly still a new species. So. Yeah. And then we'll Sweet. also be able to look at these. Sorry, Chris. Go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah, so we got this one is an astrophorid. Astrophorid, okay. Of the genus Chapo, Caracela. That should be pronounced Caracela, but it's Yeah, Caracela, okay. Caracela, yeah, and it's an undescribed species as well. Undescribed, okay. You might find the Mithetosa, but this is a Caracela. Okay. Well, um, we're good, um, pilot, whenever you're ready. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that, Chris. Hmm? No, I think it was the... Uh... So oh, that's the part great. we ripped it off of. So you can see the tissue. On the oscula hole. Yeah. And it almost has like a rim too. See the outside edge has like a rim of um, spicules, it's like fuzzy spicules. And then the inside is like this different tissuey, yeah. smushy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times, yeah, in, in during the taxonomy, you, you really co focus on the spicules that are either from the outside mm -hmm. or from the inside. And it's especially helpful to have a thin section of all. Mm -hmm. So you like can see the orientation of all the spicules mm -hmm. in place. Because many times what happens when we study the spicules of sponges, we dissolve all the tissue away mm -hmm. and then just look at the, uh, the shapes of the spicules. So you cutting it with a razor blade to get that thin slice? Um, yeah. Usually. I don't know where we're putting this. Uh, sometimes they can be embedded in, in a really thick resin and then that's mm -hmm. cut with a with like a, a diamond like a blade. diamond blade yeah polished all up and then you can use it connect it to a slide all right so we have port outer. port outer it's number seven i got the same count as you oh good <laughs> <laughs> Yay for clean data. <laughs> Caracella, new species. Thank you for that collection. Go ahead, Nav. You have eight samples. <laughs> One and two. Oh, you know why? Because number two was supposed to be a water. Your number two, your first number two, was a water that didn't fire. So then we tried to do it again, and number two actually fired the second time. So your first number two is no longer relevant. Does that make sense? Mm hmm mm. Oh, that's the, the two together, probably. It was the galathioid and the octocoral. Oh, they made that so three and four? I was counting four. that as one. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Water. Seven of sponge. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Let's zoom in on that sponge. Yeah. This looks like the sponge Afro Afrocalistes Beatrix. It's quite common, apparently, on Lophelia reefs. It is one of the target organisms for the connectivity studies. Basically, connectivity is looking at the sort of genetic connections between across a, a, a broad range. So uh, this organism is interesting because it is widespread. And we're very curious um, on its genetics. It also has um, some biomedical um, applications with, po uh, they have um, anti-cancer agents in it. Yes. So. so you can see, is there a little squat lobster on this guy? Look how cool it is, yeah. It's really fine. And like if you were to touch it, it just breaks so easily. Yeah, it breaks. They're super cool. Yeah. It's really beautiful animal. Now did we want to collect this for the Aspire connectivity studies? Uh, we can. There'll probably be a ton of these. Yes. So we can wait. Yeah. We did get an ID on that beautiful fish that was nearby that sponge that we collected. Uh, which one was that? It's called Europhysis. Oh, the Lamanema looking one? Yeah, red hake. Oh, it wasn't red. I didn't. What nonsense. <laughs> 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 the common Maybe, names are silly. Maybe that was a different fish. <laughs> that was definitely a brown gray color. They're sneaky, though. Sometimes they're, like, red when they're, you know, small, and then they change colors, and that's where they get their names from. I see that. That's a... Um, nice uh, close-up on the soft coral. Mm -hmm. Nipthiety. Like, there's an amphipod. Yeah. Oh, a little tiny amphipod. These are amphipods. They're sitting there eating off of this animal, right? Yeah, it's habitat, for sure. I'm not sure if they're, I don't think they're feeding. Are they feeding off of them or are they feeding off uh, the bacteria that I, lives on them? I don't know, but I do know that in sometimes uh, the large solitary hydroids will get a, a family of these. And they, they do wind up eating the hydroid oh, yeah. over time. But I don't know how general that is at all. There's an isopod right there, a larger one. Oh, yeah. A little flat guy. Nice little home. There's a coral oh. polyp eating. There you go. See, it looks like he caught this one. <laughs> a little too big for him, I think. <laughs> so we do have the squid guy back. On oh, the Mike, chat line, Mike, yes. Mike Becky Ann's back online. I'm sure he'll be telling us about that octopod soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks 
a good living coral here. Some are branching living coral bushes on the on the uh, right hand side of the screen. Possibly uh, another one is volcano sponges at noon. Yeah, take a little look at that fish if it's possible. that rat tail. Uh-huh. They're common up here. I believe that's an Izumia. Again, the fish people can correct me. So Mike Vagian said the octopus was probably Moose Octopus Januarii that we saw a few minutes ago. Sea Star. Oh, yeah, it looks like it. Right, Let's, right. Let's there. So if you can zoom in behind the fish on that. I know that we have Chris Ma inside the chat room. I think it's a sponge. Oh, is that a sponge? Yeah. Yes. A white squishy sponge. Now that looks like Lophelia to me. It's really white. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> 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 you can blame Roland. He's the one who saw it. We shall see sea stars for sure sometime. Yeah. Well, like a little different branching pattern there, mm -hmm. sort of candela candelabrum shaped. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this genus of Gorgonian is. We, it's really common out here. Hi. Who's chiming in? Any of these ball sponges here? Mm hmm. This look like more demo sponges. Yeah, I think that, that round ball yeah. might be a geodian. I would think I'd call these petrosids, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But I'm not 100% sure on any sponge, so. <laughs> Except for Africlis yeah, Beatrice. that one I know. <laughs> that one's unmistakable. Yeah, that looks like a geoded to me. Yeah. So it's actually growing on that dead yeah. coral. So it's like... Consumed All the way around it, the yeah. dead coral and that hydroid, that aglafenid hydroid mm -hmm. is growing right out the top of the sponge. You got also the anthomastus on it. Yeah. Now usually they have a, oh the, the, the blue is probably desmacella, is my memory of the blue, oh. the blue sponge here. Oh, look at the slope on this. Yeah, Christina said it seems like a geodia. So we're going to make our way up this slope. Slopes, my gosh, it's like oh, bigger than 45 degrees. Or about 45 degrees upslope. 
Again, we've got this compacted, this compacted sediment that's crushed in between the dead coral rubble. So it's building this lithoherm over thousands and thousands of years up off the bottom of the ocean. And at the top, I'm hoping we find tons of living lophelia, but we'll see when we get there. This is just an isolated mound in this spot. Not much on it. No. Let's keep moving. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a great plan. Now we were talking about taking that um, eDNA sample of opportunity at the at the tippy top. That sounds good. There's another rat tail. We can see all the feather, the feather vergonians, mm -hmm. the primnoids likely, it's covering a, most of it. You just see how rich this is with mm -hmm. life. There's just so much going on here. It's, yeah, and it's it's the rubble. Yeah. Like, it's just living in the rubble. And again, we're getting this rippling from the temperature differentials. Mm -hmm. You can see a little bit of the rippling happening in the water column. We're going to look at Nitzumia. There's one in here. This is squat lobster. I've got boy erased. See, I, I fit. None of the jellies in there. That sea spider is awesome. <laughs> Look at that, please. Picnagon, isn't it? Yeah. This is chelicerate, so it's actually related to the land spiders. You can, you can see that it has, it's, there's no central area for its guts, so its guts actually extend down into its legs. And these so animals are cnidarian predators. This one. So they specialize on different, either anemones or hydroids. Yeah. It's like a uh, field of sea plumes. No, we haven't really hit much living lophelia yet. I'm hoping there'll be more at the tippy top. Yeah, they're bamboo skeletons. This pink, here's another one of those um, crinoids right here at four. It's like pink, like ten arm, I think. Good eyes, Steph. The long pinnules in the end. And for the life of me, I cannot remember its name, of course. That's where we need Chuck Messing. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's right next to a stock crinoid. Oh, nice. 
very hot. I don't get to see stock crinoids very often. Like they don't grow in the mesophotic, and that's where I've been working for a long time, so yeah. I don't get to get out here that much in the deep water. So it's really cool to see a stock crinoid. Yeah, so the crinoid in the mm -hmm. foreground is connected to the bottom, and the, the one in the background can actually lift off, and they can they can actually swim. We'll be making our way up to the top of this. I have seven, too. Mm -hmm. I see a sea star. <laughs> yeah. Looks like he's eating. It's a um, ravioli star. Yeah, underneath it's got something. What do you think, Caressy on the line? Yeah, it looks like he's eating a Nadarian of some kind. He's on top of a Nadarian of some kind. Is that hey, Chris? This is Chris Ma. Hi, Chris. How are you? Great. What do you, uh, what do you got? I'm blessed that uh, the first dive actually has a sea star on it. Mm -hmm. um, this, as you mentioned earlier, a cookie star or ravioli. Ravioli stars are something that I think only went with uh, the the pentagonal ones. Mm -hmm. It's a goniastrid for sure. It looks like it might be either uh, Steenaster or uh, Gilbertaster. It's one of the uh, sort of coral-eating star uh, relatives, um, the ones that for some reason are only found in this part of the Atlantic, as far nice. as I've seen so far. Um, is there uh, – there's no indication – what it's feeding on, is there? It looks like a little bit of primno is, is sticking out the side. I'm going to get, um, you're probably on a little bit of delay, but right now we're zooming really in and tight, really um, close. And you can see this little like primno okay. it or maybe hydroid that's poking out. Just give your feet a second, you know, okay. it'll catch up. Uh, a little too oh, fleshy yeah, for okay. hydroid. Um, okay, there's Pestilaria. Well, it's definitely not one of the more common things. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe Floriaster. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this one might be... Um, you want us to collect it? 
how are how many are you up to now? We are. This will be um, sample eight. Or nine, sample really. eight. Okay. Sample. Uh, Three of those oh, are water oh, samples. Oh, Gilbert Taster. Gilbert Taster. Oh. Yeah. So you'll notice that on the arm tip there, you notice that, that it has that little um, purple amphipod. Uh, amphipod on it. Mm -hmm. um, so it turns out, and, and this is something that I learned after the uh, examination of the video, it turns out that, that Gilbert Taster has these funny little purple amphipods that I think are kleptoparasites. That is... Uh, they they sort of swim around the uh, animal when it's feeding, mm -hmm. and I don't know what they're doing there. I mean, kleptoparasites is the uh, sort of the best explanation that I could find, but they don't seem to be affected by the star, the starfish itself. Mm -hmm. So I think they're actually just um, uh, sort of taking advantage of of the food, um, or maybe they're feeding on the uh, on the sea star's uh, pyloric stomach. As it's extended. Oh, um, man. I mean... Do you know if the so, amphipod I mean, it, has been collected, Chris? Like, is it characterized? I don't characterized? know if you can collect the amphipod. I mean, nothing would make me happier than to collect this. Because Gilbert Aster, this is what's, this is what's identified as Gilbert Aster Caribia. And there's like two of these, like in our, in our, and we have them in the Smithsonian collections. Um, like two specimens. It would be great to get, get another one. Uh, but uh, the amphipods, sw I assume they would swim away if you collected it. But I've never actually collected, had one collected that was still attached to its prey. So, you know, this would, this would be kind of that. Oh, um, that would be nice because then we would get uh, the, the prey item as, at the same time as the, as the star yes. predator. And if it's possible, it's, it's also possible that you might even get those amphipods. Um, I don't know, because sometimes amphipods don't, they're, you know, the commensals that they're associated with just don't, they're so closely affiliated that they don't uh, swim away. Um, I've seen that, you know, just, they, they just sort of hang tight and, um, and uh, don't swim off like others would because for whatever reason, um, you know, it, it's their habitat, it's their home. Uh, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, this was a, a, it's a fascinating sort of little story of, uh, you know, as Scott France has, has said, um, ecosystem engineers, because uh, maybe, you know, in this case, it's not the coral so much as the sea star, because, you know, it becomes the habitat for all these other things. Um, you know, a soup, yeah, it looks very, yeah, it looks very much like Gilbert Castor. So um, it's a very, uh, it's one of those things that I really don't understand that, that well. I mean, in terms of, like, why, you know, what is, what what is compelling that I mean that amphipod you guys are right like clo we're close enough to it and the thrusters are creating a little bit of current and that amphipod hasn't swum off yet so mm -hmm. um, you know it's it's a it's it's a really odd you know relationship as far as I can tell um, but yeah um, you know if there's time and uh, it's a, it looks to me like a win win because you get you know three for the price of one if the amphipod stays on. It would be it would be great. I think it's worth worth giving it a shot. <laughs> well, my endorsement for for that <laughs> action uh, is is on the high highest possible level. So, Chris, I'm surprised you you approve collecting a sea star. <laughs> <laughs> Slash sarcasm. Yeah, that's well. what that was. <laughs> Friendly sarcasm, though. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, as I've said before, when I published this paper, uh, the thing that struck me about the Blake Plateau and this entire expedition is that um, there are sea stars here that, you know, for the deep sea, this is very unusual, that there are, are they're really not found, you know, in other places. And, and a lot of deep sea things occur widely. And, you know, and typically when I see something in the deep sea, it, it, can, it can be found sometimes even in, in you know, in, in other oceans, you know. Uh, but this one in particular, for some reason, uh, there's a Pacific counterpart, but the Atlantic, um, the Atlantic species only occurs here, and um, the other sort of coral goniasterid, uh, the the coral ver the coral feeding goniasterids that are related to it, such as Steenaster or um, uh, you know, well, and you'll see some of the others as we pr proceed 
along the expedition. They're only found in this on this on this plateau, at least so far. Uh, we we actually saw um, a relative of Steenaster out on one of the seamounts a few on the last expedition, and that was really a um, sort of a surprise for me. Uh, so um, you know, and, and we're also finding out that you know that these animals feed on corals quite a lot, not just. Um, you know, not the, just, just these, but there are other goniasterids that feed on different kinds of corals. There's another weird one that lives on this plateau called clade asterudis, which so far uh, I've only seen on um, Matropora. So oh, wow. um, there are unusual relationships between a lot of these, and, you know, I mean, which one is the more vulnerable? I don't know. But, um, you know, there are definitely some uh, – and then, of course, there's a, a bunch of sea stars that feed on sponges. Uh, which we'll undoubtedly um, observe as well. And, you know, if, I'm, if we're really lucky, we might get to see um, there's a few uh, holy grail items, as it were, that remain on my list. And if we're going to see any holy grail collection type, you know, species, I think it's going to be in this area. So oh, nice. uh, okay. I hope we'll, uh, we'll be lucky. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Awesome. So I think but, we're um, Yes. Well, anyway, I'll let the um, pilots do their uh, job, and hopefully, uh, we'll even get some of those amphipods. And um, you know, and, or maybe when you collect them, uh, you know, there will be some kind of indication of what the amphipods are doing on, mm-hmm. um, you know, on the the star itself. Uh, we'll see. Um, but uh, but you know, just to be mindful when you do you know um, recover uh, the subjects, uh, to be mindful of the, the fact that the little you know, there might be little critters mm-hmm. associated with um, with the animal, uh, the possibly even in the collection yeah. box. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we go through and we um, with a fine-tooth forceps and, and pick everything off when they come up on the ship. So oh, I mean, we'll be looking for them. We do, too, but yeah. sometimes, you yeah, know, things you just seem incidental. Yeah. So. Um, he's going to do this with the suction, so that's... He's going to try to... Yeah, let's get the suction oh. out, and hopefully okay. it'll just go right into a bucket, and it will be, like, super easy-peasy, but we'll see. Um, thanks for chiming in. Yeah, I appreciate that, Chris. <laughs> this is oh, a break you'll from... be sick of me by the... Oh, the no, 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 sure. no. <laughs> <laughs> you feel free to, to chime in whenever you want. We're happy about it. <laughs> Hey, uh, Chris, while you're still there, it's Scott France here. Um, since hey, Scott. Coming in. Hi, Chris. Um, I, I was just putting something in the chat, and I wondered if the reason why you were noting that they're only really known from this area, if that could be due to all exploration that's being done in this area by Okeanos Explorer and the Deep Search Group, um, or if it's more connected to availability of a rubbly habitat, you know, at these depths. You got any uh, conjectures there? Yeah, well, I mean, the thing about the collecting bias issue is that um, I don't see, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm referring to collections that have come from, you know, not just our, our collection, but, but, I mean, I've seen the collections at, um, at Miami and at other places, and, and, you know, the other records uh, tend, you know, they're, you know, we don't see them in the Gulf of Mexico. We don't see them, you know, in more widespread areas. Um, the, the, the one that I had mentioned before, Steenaster, we saw another one out on the seamounts, um, uh, you know, during the Stepping Stones expedition. So, so, so there's certainly the, the possibility that, um, that there's some collecting bias or it's possible that there's another species out there. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to collect that one, so uh, I'm not entirely positive. But um, is it the rubbly habitat? Is there some other sort of biogeographic explanation as to – you know, why some of these taxa are only found um, on the plateau, um, I don't know. I, you know, I mean, there's lots of conjecture that I could throw out there. Uh, but um, but I, I honestly think that it has to do with the, with the habitat, I mean, with the coral, um, you know, because that's what this area is known for. And um, like I said, there's a couple of things here that, that I just haven't found in other places, um, you know, and, and so far. I mean, there, there could be other places, obviously, a lot of the tropical Atlantic um, remains to be explored, but, um, but it's, a, it's it's weird to think that you know there's I don't know a hundred years of exploration to to the Smithsonian's um, you know collections and to the other ex- expeditions that I've seen, and that we only have like one or two, and they're from this area. 
So, um, you know, I, I, but, you know, if I, you know, if I had to say, you know, is it, is it collection bias or if it's, if it's maybe there's something about the plateau itself, I mean, a little bit of both, sure. Um, but I, I, I kind of think the plateau is special. So uh, we'll see. Um, you know, that's what's always exciting about making these discoveries. Oh, they collected it. Yeah, we collected it. I think you saw the amphipod go in. I saw the amphipod go in, and I think maybe the food item, or maybe it was just some loose rubble as well. Nifty. Um, Anyway. See it on the (laughs) quad. Thanks so much, and thanks for a great great question, Scott. (laughs) Well, that's exciting. That was a great collection. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, for sure. It's really interesting how many of these amphipods have close associations with another taxon. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of them are undescribed. I mean, I don't know how many people are out here picking amphipods up. There's a few, but... Right. I get... Not a lot of people working on them. I don't know. I think Dr. Jim Thomas and from Nova, I know, does it. Jim Thomas, mm-hmm. and there's uh, we have a postdoc at the Smithsonian now, Jimmy Bernot, oh, an nice. amphipod guy. All right, that was okay. so cool. Here's another Vazella, it looks like. Yep, big one. See a big jumbo shrimp in there? Wow. Wow. Nice. It says armored shrimp. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's totally cool. He's got that broken back, so it's probably a pinnaid of some kind. <laughs> cleaning it out you always assume the camera is on <laughs> right? you don't think he knows he's, he's being blasted across the whole world <laughs> hopefully <laughs> he'll never find out either so he won't no. even know to be embarrassed <laughs> that, is, that is great <laughs> oh, that was a good excursion. This yeah. one's shaped funny, isn't it? It's like much more wide mouth than the other ones we've been seeing. This yeah. is like also has like a tissue. It's another shrimp associate there. Yeah, it has a little connection on the mm-hmm. inside across. But this is another glass sponge. Mm-hmm. Looks like the same uh, family, Roselidae. It probably is Vazella. Just growing a little compressed. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's some like shrimps, little tiny shrimps and or worms. Oh yeah. Should just hoover yeah. off the sponge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's their entire world is this little sponge. <laughs> I could say. Eat stuff off of it. This is a reasonably well characterized sponge but mm-hmm. not sure how, how well known the associates are of it
Okay, you chimed in. Hey, my darling. Yes, I chimed in because um, looking at this uh, way, um, I think this is a Nodastrella species. Nodastrella. Okay. The, yes, the, you see in, yes. The hexactinella we were looking at? Yes. Um, you should look at just by, because the, that pattern of ostrich inside and kind of the flare, a slightly flare rim, but you can check it later. Mm -hmm. It might be an Odastrella asconema idea. I, oh, okay. As soon as I have, I, I can get in the chat, but as soon as I get the chat, I will write this. Okay. That I call in. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. I'll get it down into the C tube where we record the continuous um, species, and you know you don't even have to type it into the chat because I got it for you. Okay. <laughs> but so we, I, I no, I don't apologize. We are finding things that like we have in the guide. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Take care. That's why we have these collaboration <laughs> tools to hear from the experts. <laughs> Again with the crinoid, this nice crinoid little. with the long tipped pinules that I cannot remember the name of. I should look it up. It's a cumatulate. It's got those. It's got its uh, feet in the bottom, right, that attach to the substrate. Mm -hmm. The long, thin ones underneath. Is that another little amphipod in the center there? I don't or? know if it's that or it's a body part. Sure, look like an appendage. Oh. Part of its mouth structure, maybe? Uh, some of them have uh, these uh, parasitic worms, mesostomids, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. Or maybe that's just the way the animal looks. Chris Bronco confirmed that that glass sponge that we stopped on to take a close look at, the mm -hmm. rosellid, mm -hmm. that was Nodostrella. Mm -hmm. Stylasters. Oh no, Madripoora. These uh, zigzag corals down here, the white little white ones. Those are Madripoora. Mm -hmm. Looks like we got a little bit of increase in um, some standing dead and possible living, either Lophelia or Inalopsamia. It looks like the stuff on the left, on the right, the white is probably Lophelia. This yellowy one might is either dead or it might be Inalopsamia. I'm not really sure. We're going to head up slope a little bit. Now at about 825 meters. Nice. There's something pink.
So for those of you who are just joining us, for this is our first dive, dive number one of Expedition EX-2107 by NOAA Ocean Exploration, Windows into the Deep 2021. And dive one site is called Reef Tracks, and it is, uh, we've been traversing our way up the side of a ridge-like structure and making our way towards the top. The beginning depth was about 875 meters, and we will be finishing at about 810 meters. We have taken three uh -huh. environmental DNA samples along the way, as well as five, five additional biological samples, a uh, couple sponges, and a sea star with its associate, and a octocoral with its associate as well as a jellyfish. Am I missing anything? <laughs> sponges, sponges, jellies, a squat lobster. Yep. That was the squat lobster was with the mm -hmm. uh, bamboo coral. And we are approximately 160 miles off the uh, coast of the U.S. on the Blake Plateau. Nice. So got Ooh. another, uh, let's see. The Is that a coral in there? Mm, yeah, solitary cup coral right in the center of the screen. Mm -hmm. We also have some ophiaroids on the side, the long spinules. I would call these ophiothrix, but I'm sure Chris will go yell at me. <laughs> There's something else. <laughs> and then we have a nymphia, this pink um, soft coral in the front at the bottom of the screen. And then likely a bamboo coral is that white feather a right fan at the top of the screen. And then, it, again, we're still on this rubbly bottom, and this rubble bottom is housing these, what, I don't even know how many species <laughs> Thousands of, animals. of species yeah. are in here. We even have, like, an anemone, it looks like. It might be an anemone, Ooh. or it could be a solitary cup coral. And that, that film that's on everything is a bacterial matting. Or cyanobacteria. It looks like this could be a bryzoan or a stylaster fan at like four o'clock. That's really right a laser right there. Real tiny. Less than a centimeter. Yeah, that's probably a bryzoan. It's like a bryzoan, those yeah. those branches of nastamos. Yeah, and a th real thick it's almost like translucent, right? They have some cool sponges tucked underneath yeah, I see. here. Living Gray, in the white, yellow, more of a brown mm -hmm. one to the top right. And then we also get a lot of these um, foraminifera, like fuzzy foraminifera that live on this substrate too. I'm thinking this is Comectinia. Okay. But I'm not 100% sure on that. How is that? Crinoid. Comectinia. Me ten arm. Yeah. Megan McCuller notes that that bryozoan was also facing down like the other, yeah. so that must be... Yeah, the way it grows. Well, not must be. Could be. But <laughs> more evidence to suggest that it's its normal growing mm -hmm. habit, horizontal to the surface. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice little fish coming by. Eel. And then we're getting more, um, like, bushy dead coral, so, like, standing dead. So the more, like, the more height more these open have, space. the more space they can provide for other fauna. Oh, there we go. We got a swimming crinoid. Yeah, just what we were talking about before. <laughs> Decided and he jumped it didn't off the like bottom. where it was. Mm -hmm. We probably scared it. I'm escaping. Settled. Whoop. And then right back down. <laughs> back to collecting food. So now we got a lot more living reef up here. There's a lot more clusters of, or colonies of living Lophelia. The white is the living part. The brown has been, um, has, is dead. And this is a normal, this is normal for a Lophelia mound where the tips and tops of these coral heads are 
living, and the underside is is a is a dead skeletal system, and then inside that the sediments accumulate and they create these large bioherbs. And just the top of it is is alive. So we have quite a bit of maybe what ten to thirty centimeter coral, living coral thickets. Wow. That's pretty cool. It really is. Mm -hmm. You can see it forming the, like, it's lo lo this local, like, topography, right? Where it, like, dips down and comes back up. There's another, uh, let's see, bamboo corals and these pink feathers or the um, plumarella or primnoids. It's like a type of gorgonian or soft coral. And the small pink ones, the small pink soft corals are uh, anthomastis, which is a strawberry coral. They're pretty common out here. And you can see it's just standing dead and, and standing living coral just as far as we can see with the ROV. We have another one of those petrosid-like sponges that might be new. Uh, go ahead, whoever chimed in. Hi. Okay. Nobody wants to talk to me. Maybe That's it was fine. Somebody leaving. Yeah, maybe. What is this pink thing here? We have something at, yep, yeah, at exactly 3 o'clock. Now it's right ahead of laser. Yep, there you go. Shrimp maybe? Yeah. Yep. Got another yep. shrimp. Sweet. This is it. This is a, what? Chrysogorgid. Oh, yeah. That Chrysogorgid. Little, it definitely I think looks so. different. Oh, it's so, so, so delicate fine, yeah. and lacy, yeah. And this has those little white nodes too. Do you think those are reproductive? Is that the way these I, I do don't the same think thing? So. No, that's just the hydroid. Yeah. These are probably spawners. And you can see there was a squat lobster down inside that one as well. I didn't get a good look at the the white stuff, Stephanie, but um, they would also be having their gametes and their eggs. Okay. So absolutely, you very often oh. see the price of gorge is small. Okay. Well, uh, give it one sec because we just zoomed back in. So yep. you should you should be able to see it soon. Yeah. So. You can see this nice galath galathead. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we've seen some of them. We refer to them as saddlebags because the polyps have these, um, uh, the gametes basically form these little pouches that hang over either side of the branch. <laughs> saddlebags. Wow. That's what this is, but, yeah. The, we, we might want to make this a collection target. That you wanted to get the Galathead or the, uh, the Chrysogorgid? The Chrysogorgid. Yeah, if you want, we can get yeah, it. Yeah, I think that would be nice. And we haven't seen it before on this yeah. one. And yeah, we can stop. Uh, let's see. Let's talk to the pilot. Pilot, this is science. Can we grab this Chrysogorgid? Starboard outer, so. It may go. It was a squat lobster on a bamboo coral. You want to do that? I was thinking the Chrysogorgid was the target of most interest, but... What do you think? Suck it up. Yeah, maybe sucking it up would be a better choice, just so we don't risk losing that sample. That would be great. 
Thank you. Uh, if, if you're talking about losing the Chrysogorgias, they will not let go. Uh, oh. Excuse me, the Kairos eyelids. Kairos eyelids won't let go, if that's what you mean. So you think it'd be safe for us to open that bio box with a um, with him attached to the uh, bamboo coral on it? Let me get. Sorry, I thought we were talking about the Chrysogorgia coral. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm what we're talking about anymore. No, I was. I was. Well, for this, I was thinking it would. It was. It's like attached to um, some rubble. Yeah, maybe. So it yeah. should just like we could really just the crush thing. the rubble up a little bit and suck up the the gorgone, I'm hoping. Okay. Okay. Just, just in general, if you're looking at a chirostylid crab, those little squat lobsters mm -hmm. that are in the coral colonies, they will hang on. They do not want to leave. In fact, you have to push them off, and so you don't have to worry about just suctioning if that's what you're concerned about. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So the concern was we have one in the bio box already. And the, we didn't want to open that bio box and risk losing that um, squat lobster on the piece of bamboo coral that's already in there. So, right. but I think we're going to... I think it's going to be the same. Here. Yeah. They spend their lives hanging on to these corals. Yeah. Uh, they're not like the... Um, you uh, minutes. And stuff that's yeah. Easily. That bolt off. Okay. But recall, I'll leave it to you. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Mm -hmm. We're going through this coral and ideally getting the squat lobster with it. What's that? I think that's sponge back there. Sponge. Yeah. There's a little white soft coral. That might be nice if it comes up with it. Mm -hmm. Make that a associate. Um, and Alan and Stephanie, um, Andrea Quattrini is lobbying for um, one of the white soft corals. Um, I, didn't, I don't think she's talking about anything that's in the view here, but probably the soft corals that we've been um, passing over. I've noticed a number that are sort of uh, purpley transparent. Um, Andrea should confirm if that's what she means. Okay. And I'm just relating what she's got in the chat room in case you're not thinking. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Appreciate that. I was just looking over there. I think it would be nice to see if we can collect that um, soft coral as well. Maybe it will come up with this. So that's what she wants, I think. Oh, the little white one? So this is sample nine. Yeah. Yeah, it's tiny. Yeah, it looks like it just broke off that little piece of coral. It should suck right up.
Hey, who's with us? Hey, Stephanie. This is Andrea Quattrini. <laughs> Hi, Alan. Hi, Andrea. How are you? Hi. I'm pretty good. How are you all doing? Great dive so far. <laughs> it's, it's fun. <laughs> I was looking for that phone number for you, but it seems you found it. Uh, yeah, Saco put it in. Um, I just, sometimes it's just easier to call. Mm -hmm. um, behind this price of gorgid, there are these two white soft squirrels. They look like pseudodrifa, but they're not purple. They're they're translucent, really, more, I think. Um, those are the corals that I'm interested in. I don't know if you've, you've caught them yet, if you've seen them. We have not picked them up, but we were going to ask for them. We've also, though, uh, might be moving, but we'll see if we, what we can do. Yeah, I think there's one to the left of that trimp. So, great. I just wanted to clarify. Okay, we'll give it a shot. Small and white. Easy peasy. And it's caught on the lip. There you go. All right, that's bucket uh, three. This is science. Bucket three. Bucket three. Excellent. Yes, there was something uh, very close to where you're at. Is a very small branching octocoral, uh, sort of like it's whitish, very white looking with uh, bumps on the branches. Now I think it's right, uh, just straight uh, beyond the uh, suction sampler. It w they were right next to each other. It may have fallen on the. I don't see it anymore. Is it this? Just be below, to below the shrimp? It looks like dead lophelia to me. Oh. Is it this we're looking at? Can you pan yeah. down just a hair right there? Oh, yes. Yes, that's it. There are a few right in, in frame. Mm -hmm. Right, one right between the lasers? Right next to this, the cup coral, just to the left of the cup coral. So, uh oh. Oh, no. Go, um, it, it was, yep, just to the left of that cup coral. Yeah, yeah so um, up pan up. Bit. Oh, sorry. If you guys could pan up a little. Okay, stop. Yep. That white branching thing right mm -hmm. below the pink cup coral at, like, 11 o'clock. Yeah. It's Thanks. tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah. Yep. Um, oh, Is that what I you're looking for? Andrea, mm -hmm. is that good? Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> it's it's up. A, those are stylasterids. Um, oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. The cup coral. It's, it's actually up a little bit. You were on it, and then you you panned down. So, um, if you could pan up a little bit. Yeah, so it's, it's panning. Stop. Ah, they're coming into view now. Oh. Right between the lasers, right now. <laughs> right between the lasers. Well, if you can't find it, there's more around. I'm sure yeah. you'll see it soon. Um, yeah, if you guys it looks come. It's like pseudodrifa, but it's, it's not purple, so. Do you see it now? <laughs> yeah, give her a second to catch up because the, there's a delay in the in the camera mm -hmm. between the ship and the shore, so. Andrew, do you still see it? No, it's it's it's. You kind of passed right over it. Okay, so can we pan down a little next to the shrimp and then hold? Yeah. Okay. I think there, it's a colonial form, not... Not a solitary form. Anything, Andrew? It's a soft squirrel. And then... Oh. Is it this? Oh, that's the Nepthead? 
Oh. Yeah, it's the Nepsid. The Nepsid. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Go down. Yes. <laughs> okay. Go straight in. Go ahead and, and zoom a little bit, guys. Yeah. You, you've got your eye on it now, Stephanie. There we go. That guy? Great. Any, either one. Thank you. Yes. Can we collect this soft coral, please? Thanks. Well done. A new bucket, too. I don't. We don't want it in the same bucket. We just did. Okay. Okay. All right. So it's going to be sample 10. 10B, mm -hmm. canister 2. Nephtheidae. Yeah. I think she said Pseudodrypha. We got a little cup coral with it, too. Hey! And it's in the bucket. Thanks, guys. That is so great. Another hydroid, too? <laughs> no, no. No, go. Keep moving. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely got some hydroids. Mm -hmm. Be careful when we pick through that bucket and get stung. It's a price I'm willing to pay. <laughs> Yes, very good sampling and good time to explore. There's that um, volcano sponge again. And it's these thickets of... You know, dead coral thickets are increasing. All right, we got more living lophelia on top here. Yeah. It's interesting. It ha hasn't changed as much as I sort of expected mm -hmm. from top to bottom. Yeah. But uh, a lot of the time, 
we'll get like to this, you know, this part of the reef and it's just white coral everywhere. You know, this is not very large pieces yeah. of living, but there's an awful lot of, you know, dead under, underneath, you know. Right. Like, like sub, sub coral. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> the undersides. Um, this is pretty nice, oh, though. I, I had to be a class, so I missed a chunk of the dive there. Um, we are actually on the top now of the... Uh, um, I'm not sure where... We're at 815 meters, yeah. so we must be very close to the top. We should have another... Uh, do we have another lump to go over? I can't really tell. Yeah, we should have one uh, more yeah, mound. But yeah, this is nice. It, it see more live stuff. So I wonder, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's all this stuff about being on the north side and the south side and where you are relative to the current mm -hmm. and so it's not necessarily the height on the mound you want to be at but you want to be on the side. forward facing part of where the current is meeting it and so yeah um, if we got to that location how it would change interesting cool stuff mm -hmm. yeah it does look like it's getting to be more life there's yeah. certainly a lot more live here than when we first settled down. Oh, yeah, for sure. And there's a lot of um, rugosity and relief within the coral heads. So they run, they're yeah, exactly. much thicker yeah. and deeper. Yeah. and Yeah. 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 It's, it's probably, yeah. Carpet. It's probably like the dead stuff is a little bit newer dead, whereas the stuff at the bottom of the reef is old dead. So you got some good thickets over here on the left, or right. And so the, the large, the, the heads, the living heads on the tops are no more than like 20 or 30 centimeters wide. But they're, again, living on this standing dead coral that's underneath it. So nice. This is a, I would call this a Lophelia reef, huh? So it's the first time anyone's seen this one. Unknown before. This looks like a Petrosia to me now. Can we look at this sponge that's at 3 o'clock? Uh, it's almost dead center now. Yep, and zoom right there. There's a huge dead coral up there. Yep. So we're going to need to look at the top rim of that. This one looks like a Petrosia to me, but I think Chris can chime in when it populates on her screen. Yeah, it's hard to see that top rim because we've got the Nephthead on it. Yeah, there we go. Another stock kind crinoid there. Mm -hmm. well as a feather star just behind it. Mm -hmm. So you have both types here at the same frame. Yeah, nice. And you can see that you can see the sediment underneath now. Yeah. Underneath the coral thickets. Behind right. it. That might be even a snail or a hermit crab is a snail. Ooh. A nice snail on the front. Um, no ocean exploration doesn't we don't get to collect too many uh, gastropods. Mm -hmm. It might be good to collect that. If that's possible, we have, one. We have Do three we have more. Room for we that? have two more. We have two more buckets, and one more bio box left. So that could go into a suction bucket. Oh. Or maybe that's. I don't know. I could should ask the. I don't. I don't know if it's common or not. Mm -hmm. I'd have to look at the top of it. I think it might be one of those Is really it shiny. Slit shell? Mm -mm. No? no. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, Nav. Go ahead. One jar. Oh, your bypass. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we only have one sampling bucket and one bio box bucket. Okay. Sorry, Scott, go ahead. What? No problem. I was saying I'm, this was an hour and a half later because I'm doing a uh, Molusco lab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is a Petrosied. See, this, that top rim is nice and thin. There you got that membrane. That's right. nice and lumpy. So. What was just off to the left bit? There were a bunch of small polyps. I don't know if those were small coralomorphs or if they were anemones with white-tipped tentacles. 
They're really small. Yeah, they're tiny. We also have a star right there. Yeah, all those. A little anemones, maybe. I think they're probably solitary corals. I think I see they're clear, and you can see their yeah. indices underneath. Yeah. This one, though, doesn't. This one, you can see it's. No, those are quite. It's soft, I guess. They're very gregarious mm -hmm. for solitary corals. That one's sucked in. Yeah, I, I'm not convinced of solitary I think you might be seeing the uh, Lophelia skeleton underneath it. Oh, uh, maybe it's Lophelia. They're awfully small for Coralomores, so they're probably little anemones. Little anemones. Scott, do you think these are a good collection target then? Or a couple different people uh, who well, expressed interest in these things, but... Yeah, I mean, all of this stuff, Alan, you know, is undersampled because they're so <laughs> small, and so we get it when we get the rubble. Uh, gotcha. So I would never say that, no, it's not a, a bad uh, collection. <laughs> we also have a sea star at uh, 11. If you guys want to zoom out, there you go. Yeah, uh, no, the sea star, pink sea star right there. It's hard to tell that's what it is, but you can see its texture, yeah. Alan, more specifically, you know, we need someone like Estefania, Fanny Rodriguez, or somebody. I don't have the expertise in this group mm -hmm. to know, you know, what's novel and what's not. I only know right. the number of samples that we target during these is low for um, actinarians. Makes sense. Well. That's a good point. Is that a yellow anemone? Yeah, I think or that's that a, a solitary. That, that's a solitary coral? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that would be awesome. A bamboo coral just hanging on there. Looks like S1 clade. And you can see it's just got a few polyps, mostly bare skeleton, but not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dead yet. Come back. <laughs> You'll be dead shortly. <laughs> oh, it's so nice to be able to talk to people who understand the movies of my era. <laughs> <laughs> I love Bonnie Python. We're up on that. I'm, I'm worse with the, the office. I quote the office all the time, and everyone looks at me like I'm crazy. Oh, nice view. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I, I would need Chris to make the final call, but I would call that Petrosity. But maybe it's yeah. the same one as before. It doesn't really have a super thin membrane on the top that I'm used to seeing. But... Chris can look at it later and chime in. It's just, yeah. Just great. That's awesome. Sweet. Yeah, because sometimes it has like this spiky, like it has like a spiky top edge. Mm -hmm. That's the one I'm used to seeing, so I'm not sure 100% what this is. Thanks, guys. There's a nice living lophelia head here. Uh-huh. With the nephtheids all over it. Mm -hmm, that little guy. Oh, yeah, that was solitary hydroid we saw. Or is it, oh, no, stalked crinoid. Stalked crinoid. Just a really fine, delicate one. That's yeah. great. Yeah, nice. Looks like there's a giant coral head a, ahead of us yep. in Sirius, a nice, maybe a couple meters wide. And I know this is close to the end, but at the top we are going to make uh, our environmental DNA sample of opportunity. Great. Yeah. Alan and Stephanie, this is Andrea. Hi, Andrea. I just curious if you seen many fishes during this dive. I left for a little while and wasn't sure if you. I'm sorry, I missed. Any more fishes? I missed that. Could you repeat that one? I'm just curious about the fishes on this dive. I missed a couple of hours, so I'm wondering if you saw any other fish species besides the eels um, and then the sharks in the beginning. 
Yeah, we saw this. We saw the chimera. Uh, I think they're Netzumia, the one, the rat tails. Um, we hmm? saw the sh- the shark with that really thin head, like the flattened head, the big eye. Very mm-hmm. large. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, that one, I think they said it was a red, even though it was totally brown. Like a <laughs> red hake. Yeah. Um, Oh, okay. Anything else? Oh, and the long, the longer eels. Uh, you said you saw some of those eels, though, right? So this is bamboo coral. The cutthroat, sure. yeah. Yeah, the cutthroat, okay. Yeah, cool, thank you. Yeah. It's a nice, healthy bamboo coral. Yeah, this one looks good, and I was noting that the uh, base of the skeleton, the axis, is uh, really thick. Mm-hmm. The diameter, I mean. Is that where you, how you age that these, like you do with um, with black coral, or is it more is that is that appropriate to say? Yeah, the oh. aging would be done using um, geochemical methods of okay. you, know, you basically yeah, would drill take a look through the diameter of the axis, and then. Um, Look at it that way. We don't have a good handle on the, the quote unquote rings that are put down. You mm-hmm. know how long it takes to deposit rings. So it's not simply a matter of counting rings. Ah. So here's that eel we were seeing. That's really common. Yeah. You can see how the structure is even more open and yeah, dense. Here's something new. This that looks like a madrepora to me. The big head of it. Wow, it is. Wow. Okay, to the right of that, or, uh, to the right of laser. Okay, now to the north of laser. So at tw- twelve o'clock, on the edge of the screen, edge of the reef, there's this pink and white coral. Yeah, yeah. it's like right in laser. Yeah, you're on it. You're on it right now. So that's Madripoor. So this is a different species. Yeah. Vase like sponge in the background there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sweet. So you can just see how different it grows than the Lophelia, right? Really? Nice zigzag yeah. patterning. You get the polyps are out. And this pink, I believe it is. I know it in Oculina it is. The pink is actually inside the calcium carbonate and not on the tissue. Um, yeah. I believe that's the case for Madripoor too, but I could be incorrect on that. It's really big. Yeah, zigzag coral. And you have to take the polyp off with bleach and look at the um, calices in between. Because we have Carolina and Oculata out here. Oh, and I can't they're... tell the difference yeah. until I have it in my hand. So there might be a couple other species too, but I know. You have to look at the if the this the, every other calice is taller than every other one. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh-huh. <laughs> Typical. And there's a what is that? barnacle. Oh, nice. This looks like a hydroid or something. Definitely a hydroid in the background yeah, there. Focus there Ooh, you go. That is a, an athecate hydroid. Mm-hmm. So it's unlike the other ones we were looking at. These have larger polyps, and they are not able to retract those polyps into the... Uh, it, back into like a little cup mm-hmm. and there's a good chance that that species actually has a, a medusa in its life cycle so it, it may be a 
The other end of a jellyfish. Sweet. Is that big? Looks like we might have an uh, urchin on the left, too, or the right. So you can see the little stinging cells, so tiny. Look at this freaking camera. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> like a, a Stoloniferous octocoral growing on there. Could be. On the dead part of this mm -hmm. uh, scleractinian coral. That's a good call, Alan. I was looking at that and saying, why is this looking different to me all of a sudden? Yeah, <laughs> super weird. It doesn't have the right number of tentacles. Right. <laughs> So yeah, look, here we have a we have another um, crinoid. Yeah, another crinoid to the right there. So this just you can see how so many things are all packed together. Yeah, we got gorgonians living on it down here, and, then, and at the base you can see all these pink little legs. They're all ophiroid legs. See them all tucked in there. I'm sorry, I want to go back to that quote-unquote stoloniferous. Um, I didn't actually yeah. see a ribbon connecting it. I don't know if you did, Alan, but I'm wondering if we didn't. Could those be many recruits of the soft nephid corals? Oh. Oh. Maybe. You are looking at the right spot. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see anything connecting those polyps. Sorry, Scott. What would I be looking for? What is the what's the question? Well, basically, if it was a stoloniferous, there would be continuous tissue among all of those polyps, kind of like a mat or a ribbon, and I'm not quite seeing it. And so, okay. what I'm asking is, are these individual polyps that are just early uh, stages of the soft coral? I understand. At, okay. At the top, there's a there's a little place where they look connected. But oh, it could be on the back okay. side, yeah. But right. So see the tissue. It looks like there might be tissue between here. Uh, in the in the in central the area. Yeah, like yeah. in the back side, but it's actually on the back side yeah. of this the coral piece. Cool. But then here, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, right. and then just below you can see the soft coral. This, so, yeah, that has the exact same polyping. So it must. It, like minis. Yeah, they'll could leave. be lots of lots of soft corals. Yeah, that have settled, but they've only hey, grown to one or two. That's a pretty successful recruitment might explain why we're seeing so many of them. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's a little shrimp here with the green guts. Yeah, there he is. As you can see his little shrimp. eyes. Just above that, is, is that a gastropod there? Yeah, and this, there is another shrimp. I'm sorry, snail. Snail. And then we've got a lepos, a barnacle right here with his with his arms out. In the bottom right hand. Yep. Yeah. It's feeding. Oh, this is so much stuff. Oh yeah. Got. Eggs in that coral, the bright pink. There's just so much here. <laughs> so I'm glad that we're going to take an environmental DNA sample here. Yeah, right. <laughs> There's a Nephthia, I mean, um, Anthemastus right here. The strawberry coral. A little, uh, a lobster. There's a little spot lobster. It's uh, almost in the center, upper part on the. Uh, see, this was Madrepora. I'm not sure where you see in the squat lobster. Um, so it's. Uh, well, we're we're pulling out now. Yeah. Almost dead center. I think I see an urchin right here. Just in the dead center there. Yeah, right an behind urchin? the yeah, right behind the nephtheid. But you know. Wow. It's hard to see. <laughs> this 
This is like this what, guy it's, right here. what it's like on it. Yeah, in the background there. Yeah, like on a on a tropical reef. This mm -hmm. is the same sort of feeling I have. It's like wow, Just overwhelmed with all yes. the life that's <laughs> taking up all the space. <laughs> There's, I don't even know, like 25 species just in this little screen. Yeah. 25. What I was referring to is. Go, go ahead, Scott. Uh, well, I'm just trying to, as the camera's going over it, I was trying to direct you to what I was. Being too polite. Do you ha are you on a delay? Or are you pretty, um, you're pretty good on time? Pretty good. Yeah, okay. So that was one species of coral housing. Who knows how many, how many critters? How we just many saw. associates just growing on it? And that's what thirty centimeters. Yeah. Yep. There's a, a Ooh, um, sideroid, sideroid urchin in there to the right. And a crinoid and more more hydroids. And then this is different. This gorgonian, the bamboo. Yes, that's bamboo uh, coral. That's, uh, Plexord. I'm forgetting the name of it right now. I think it was one of the ones Alan had on the the do not sample list. <laughs> <laughs> that sideroid. Mm -hmm. That pencil urchin is mm -hmm. just jammed in there. So we'll have all this video for reference when we're going through the sequences that come out of the environmental <laughs> right. DNA samples. Right. You want to you wanna pop that one, the, the next Niskin bottle? I think this is a good spot for it, yeah. especially since we spent so much time here. Okay, if we can do that. If that works. So we're going to take a hey, water you, sample. Yeah, want to be at one meter if possible. Are you recording ROV aft? So this is 11, right? 11W? That's what I have, yes, 11W. Yes. This gives you a good idea how dark it is down here normally with all these crazy lights all over everything. Yeah. There we go. I think somebody has their phone unmuted. Thanks. Did you guys did you guys grab the um, water sample? Oh. oh, oh, I'm sorry. He's trying to get up off the bottom so he can. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I think it's it's probably close enough at this point. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Perfect. And that'll leave the final bottle for just before departure from the bottom. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I would follow the ridge. And if oh, we, there it goes. If we see anything cool, we can. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Good afternoon, if you're joining us. This is NOAA Ocean Exploration EX2107, Windows to the Deep 2021, and this is our first dive, uh, which we called Reef Tracks, and we've been exploring a, uh, a ridge-like structure that has been full of Lots of uh, dead coral skeletons. That's something that naturally happens. And moving our way to the top where we found more and more percentage, higher percentages of living corals. And all along, uh, from top to bottom, there have been many associates and different organisms living in and among the uh, corals. The, the coral rubble first at the bottom and then the living coral at the top. And we are about... 800 and 810 meters deep right now. Uh, so we're at the shallowest of our dive. We started about 875 meters, and we are about 160 miles off the coast, southeast coast of the United States. Yeah, let's get a nice look at that. will make the fish people happy. It's making me happy. So of course the fish are quite difficult to collect this way, but uh, we have the high definition video. If we can get Nice footage like this it makes it possible to identify the presence of the fish in the water at this locality. It's having a good time. One of the things we've been doing on, on this dive is uh, routinely collecting water samples. One, the last one just a little bit ago Inside the water, uh, we hope to collect loose DNA or skin cells from the different organisms that live here and be able to uh, sequence those back in the lab and then thereby get a better understanding of a uh, broader swath of the diversity that's present in this area. Uh, From the chat room, this, this fish that we were just looking at seems to be a juvenile Europhysis. Europhysis. Oh, 
<laughs> but there seems to be some <laughs> disagreement about that. Laminema melanurum, says Andrea Quattrini, the coral hake. must be a view of what we were uh, alluding to before, differences of where the current is um, actively flowing and strong and where it's not. You can see that there's a real difference from the left to the right as you're going higher up in this mound and lower in the amount of the live stuff that's poking out. Great. Okay. A nice little yellow sponge here in the foreground. I don't think that's a tunicate. I think it's a sponge. Hmm. That's an interesting thing. <laughs> See the soft corals both in front and behind that. Alan, are you saying the yellow thing you think is a tunicate? No, I thought it was a sponge. I think. Oh, good. Okay. I, I, I was wondering if possibly it was a tunicate for a second, but no, it, it definitely looks more spongy to me. Got it. Okay, I agree. We have a nice blue sponge there in the background, and the, is that Desmosella? Yeah, we're pretty barren on this side over here. It's like a 45 or more degree slope, though. That's kind of cool. Another one of those eels. Are these burrows here in the, the white exposed area? Yeah, those. Looks like dug up Lophelia, maybe. Possible burrow. So there might be something living in that little burrow there. 
A little crab. Oh, a shrimp. There we go. I doubt that shrimp made that burrow. Imagine there's something else living in it. So the old the old coral, the topmost layer is this darker color, and if you start to dig it out underneath, I believe it's phosphorus or something, it's a, or phosphate. It doesn't it doesn't have that layer of black film on it. So the underside is old and dead, but it's not exposed to the water columns, so it stays white. So when you dig it out, when something digs it out, it looks like a big white pile of fresh lophelia, but it's really pretty old. Oh yeah, it's squishy. Really fine, silty sediment under there. Oops. Yeah. Completely obstructed now. There's an eel and the stock crinoid right in front of them. Again, this field of primnoid gorgonians, these fine feathery gorgonians. So we lot of, lost a lot of that um, standing dead and living coral on the side of this mound. We have a pretty good slope here, right about 45 degrees, maybe bigger. You can kind of see some more habitat ahead past the lights. But otherwise, we have similar species in the bottom. The primnoids are the most common. And then we've got some likely bamboo coral. It's hard to tell from this distance um, on the upper part of that slope there. Um, again, this is Noah Ocean Explorer. If you're just tuning in, you are watching Windows of the Deep 2021 live. We are about 160 miles off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida, on the Blake Plateau. In uh, well, we landed at 170 meters underwater, but now we're about a, I'm sorry, 870 meters underwater, but now we're at about 825, coming up this Lophelia mound or a bioherm. Um, our max depth today was 870. Our min depth should be around 808. 
And we have about an hour and a half before we're off bottom. Uh, we should be coming up around four. Just give you a heads idea of how much time we have left to watch. Uh, most of this dive is at about a 15 meter slope, but on the upper parts of these mounds, it's probably closer to about 45 locally. Let's see. Uh, the length of this entire feature is about five kilometers. We have these continuous mounds that kind of line up in a line that we're diving on. Um, and the dive track's about 820 meters long, but we might actually reach the end of it. Well, that's all right. Yeah. Efficient. Yeah, that's right. Considering we collected like lunatics, I think so. <laughs> Ten samples. <laughs> you really get a words, feel for it. I wasn't going to use that, but I was going to be impressed at the collection and the distance traveled. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Only five of those are water, though, so it's really only five samples that we have to process. Yes. We've done right. We've done four. Have we done four waters or five waters? Four waters. Four, so we have one more water to do at the end. Yes. Okay. Massively large colony up at the uh, top there. Yeah, the, the bamboo Anything coral. Else? Anything else? I think they're trying to move up this slope here. Sort of it's going across of the saddle. Yeah. Yeah, so we're getting the increase of yep, standing dead corals, it looks like possible living coral on top of it. This really gives you a great feel for the the scale of this of this reef yeah, it's, like structure. It's huge. So it's about we have about what 62 meters in height total overall height from the bottom of this mound to the top of the highest mound we're going to be on today but I think there's some more shallower ones as yeah. you head north. Or northeast, uh, west. We covered about a kilometer of space. Yeah, we, the... yeah. Yeah. There's, this up here looks like the slope is increasing as we head up this mountain. Bioherm. Back into this, yep, standing dead coral. We got a nice bamboo coral, maybe that petrosiid or that new species, possible new species we picked up earlier. Looks like the same one we had earlier that we had picked up. Yeah, that looks similar to the one that we had collected. That sponge at the at six o'clock. Yeah, nice bamboo goo coral here. We have internodal branching. So the branches happen in between those brown nodes on the bamboo.
operations meeting will be held on the bridge in five minutes. That's operations meeting on the bridge in five minutes. Another one of these crinoids, a ten armed crinoids. I think or eight, aren't you? This one's eight armed. Carato Isis is the name. Of the bamboo car off. Yes. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, I, I should be careful with that, but you know, that's a pretty common genus currently uh, for internodal branching mm -hmm. fan, um, especially if they're in a plane. And we know that Coratoisis gray eye is uh, known from down in this area, so that's why I'm venturing just for that, uh, mm -hmm. that name. But um, there's, a, there's a lot of flux, a lot of work going on right now in the taxonomy of these things. So, you know, another year from now, it may be a totally different genus, but you know, that's <laughs> what it is. That's the nature of systematics. Mm -hmm. Each one of those names is a, is a hypothesis, and so when we use them, they're always subject to, uh, you know, being revised when there's better information available. I'm pretty sure they just do it to torment me, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's starting to feel personal. We haven't, even, <laughs> we haven't even talked about Lophelia. Yeah, oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> but Lophelia is an interesting case oh, because... Hmm? Can I say something about the pod? We're looking at them here? Yes. Sure. One of the things about this that I always notice when we uh, get a good close-up is they uh, polyps almost give like a square view with the uh, the tentacles. Note the way the pinules are. Doesn't each, each tentacle looks like a little rectangle attached oh, to the Oh, yeah, polyp. I can see that. Yep. Very characteristic. You can tell that compared to some other polyps. They're not quite that way. So something about the relative length of the pinule to the tentacle may be a clue to what species this is. We're right. still learning an awful lot of how do we identify and recognize and describe these species based on the soft parts? And that's because now we have the luxury of these fantastic cameras and robots in the deep sea that allow us to see them alive. The history of the naming of these groups, which started in the 19th century, is all based on the hard parts that come up in trawls and things. And so yeah. they didn't have the luxury of seeing it the way we do. Yeah, and once, if it comes up in a trawl, it's usually all beat to heck and, you know, looks terrible. That's a so, really... It's nice seeing them in situ. There we go. We're going up slope again. So we got this increase in this uh, standing dead Lophelia as we come up off the side between the two slopes and into this new um, mound, which is very steep. That's higher than 45 degrees, probably closer to 50 or 60 degree slope there. Wow. We've got lots of this petrosid type sponge here that, that looks like a volcano. There's four Vazella right next to each yeah. other. Then with these thickets of dead lophelia are probably a meter or two tall. I can think? see how the all the rubble gets to the bottom, right? Yeah, just Tumbling rolls. Tumbling down. Up. And starts making the biohirum underneath it. These grow on the top of. Tum we have some live lophelia here. Hmm? Tumbling tumbleweeds. Exactly. Tumbling weed corals. There's another petrosead like sponge sticking up right here at 6 o'clock. Right in the middle, yeah. I find it interesting how that sponge is. We've seen it all along, but it's always just sort of one mm -hmm. by itself. Yep, one single tube. 
There's the sponge in the upper right. Mm -hmm. Looks like a glass sponge. Mm -hmm. A flat one, one of the flat ones. There's Madripura again at 4 o'clock. We got a tuft of that. I hear Colony. And again, we're increasing the living Lophelia up top. These thickets are about, what, 10 to 20 centimeters wide. And then there's, again, living on this. Is it possible to take a closer look at that sponge for a second? Yeah, what is that? That's different. That is, is that different. Two? It looks like it has two. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's definitely a, a glass sponge, mm -hmm. you know, but but it has an unusual morphology there. Mm -hmm. I get. There's a nice head of coral up top, probably closer to 30 centimeters. I think we can keep moving. Thanks. Fish there. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> so they have those rat tails, my understanding oh, at least. Right next to the glass bunch, nice. which uh, is a is a notostrella. Like no we, we saw one before, but mm -hmm. maybe this is a different species. Thank you, Christina. So first it was zipping all over the place, and now it's yeah, hunting. It looks hanging like. out. It's gonna hunt for something. Nizumia sclerorhynchus. That's a nice name. Thank you, <laughs> Andrea, in the chat room. Oh, good, because I was calling it Nazumia for a while, so. Good. Got it right. Yay. Yeah. So it's, that's what it's doing, is hunting? I think so. It sure looks like it. Mm -hmm. Looking down. Thinking about food. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what they eat, so. On top of the fact that we're probably blinding it. So maybe it's hiding from us. Yeah, it looks like it's just bopping its head on the ground, trying to... has a neat little hook at the top of its pectoral, I mean, its dorsal fin. Oh, yeah. There's a nice living head of Lophelia. And they're back at that sponge we talked about earlier. They get nice um, relief and rugosity here with all this dead coral thickets. It's probably a 45, 50 degree slope. And that's the, looks like we're not even near the top yet. <laughs> Keeps going. That was really good about the diet of that, of that fish, the Nizumia. From its stomach contents, it was found that it eats uh, amphipods, polychaetes, and ophiroids. Nice. Turned plenty of abundance mm -hmm. inside that reef.
Then we got nice white, um, more white uh, bamboo car all ahead. There's like two or three large fans of it. Mm hmm. Maybe that's two fans, and the one just looks like a third. Yeah, I think so. You've got Madripura again at 6 o'clock. So we should see about zooming in again there. In a zoom? At some no, point. I think they're shuffling. Yeah, when they're done shuffling. shuffling. ROV staff is shuffling. Pilot change. So a bioherm like this, how long does it take to potentially, anyway, I, I build it, up to be this many meters tall? It's like hundreds of thousands of years, 100,000 years. Um, I, John can chime in if he's still listening. I know that they sampled one, like the cord one, mm -hmm. off of Norway or somewhere. And he knows the age, and I do not remember the age of that. So I, yeah. he can either tell me on text message... <laughs> <laughs> or I will look it up. It takes a long time, though, for biological yeah. structure of this size to yeah, be created. So, so these corals only grow about a third of an inch. I'm sorry, a third of a centimeter to a centimeter. So it's about the length of your pinky nail a year. Wow. So, and then that we're looking at thickets that are about a 10, 10 centimeters. So that's yeah. right, 10, 10 to 30 years of growth Yeah. in this, you know, small... And then this is what's 65 meters tall, so yeah, all compressed down yeah, and broken over, down, yep. and hundred thousand years maybe, guessing. We got more um, Madripoor behind this. Oh yeah, this bamboo coral sort that's here, tucked down behind that. And there's yeah, a, as we were approaching these bamboo corals, I was going to say that from the angle that they're growing, it suggests that the dominant current is coming towards us, mm -hmm. sort of push, push, uh, you know, towards the ROV camera. So if we're facing west, that means it's coming from the south. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Which isn't surprising. Um, that's the prevailing the current. The yeah, predominant yeah. current direction is south to north yeah. Yeah. over this region. Smack in the middle of the Gulf Stream, you know. Yeah. Close to it. It is interesting, though, how there's different water masses that get entrained across mm -hmm. the Blake Plateau, and that one of those is comes all the way from Antarctica mm -hmm. and the other from the, the Labrador Sea. Mm -hmm. and these water masses have different characteristics in terms of temperature and salinity and mm -hmm. oxygen concentration. Minerals. And minerals, exactly. The silica content is different. And uh, we should be able to identify the water masses as we, that we sampled in mm -hmm. based on those characteristics as we do our... Uh, well, visual transects and the eDNA samples. Mm -hmm. We have lost that, that rippling effect, though. Yeah. So we're probably no longer in that transition, temperature transition zone where we were earlier. We're much shallower than we were when we started this morning. So, so what are we at? 810, 810 meters. Yeah. 
we're getting to about is the shallowest part of this dive. Ooh, look at this coral head. Yep, right on top. What is this black mass to the left? I'm not sure. We'd have to zoom in on it. Quite... It might just be shadow. Oh, it is. It's just shadow <laughs> it's just underneath just a, there. Like a little cave. <laughs> underneath there, Open yeah. That tarp, right? I'm sorry, Scott, what? I said uh, Alan was hoping for that tar sponge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I am be looking for that one. Tercitus. Sweet. Yeah. So there actually is another mound in front of us. I see. I think. Are we going to try to hop over to the next mound yeah, or might. spend some time digging into this one? Either way, whatever you <laughs> want to do. That's, That's the nice part about being out here. You ours get to, to explore. Yep, you, you get to choose. <laughs> Pretty cool. Who's the king of the mountain? I want to know what's on top. Mm -hmm. Look at this nice coral head here. Oh, yeah, that is can beautiful. We, can Over we to swing the right? right? Yeah. So that's probably the biggest one we've seen up here. Well, the view on Sirius right now is great. Oh, yeah. You can just see D2 on top of this mound. Well, you can see on D2 how, I'm sorry, on the Sirius view, how like you have these big chunks of white, living coral head and then in between them is that dead brown yes. standing dead that's underneath it so this is the biggest one we've seen so far was a meter wide yeah i think so i would think at least mm -hmm. maybe we can zoom in there and take a peek at what's living in Inside in amongst the Nice living Lophelia head. Some madripoor up here in the corner. Now is that madripoor, does it grow on the Lophelia sometimes? I think it does, yeah. You can see. on the Probably on the dead part. Uh -huh. I don't know if it actually settles on the living. It probably settles on the dead in between. Inoids in there, of course. Then we got. The soft coral in the yeah. back, in the back right. It's the head. Um, you can zoom in on this crinoid at 6 o'clock. Get a snap zoom on him. There's actually a couple of them. There's three or four or five of them. And this looks like a different species of Gorgonian here. Yeah. So that's a small Camachulid crinoid. Mm hmm. This is full of hydroids mm -hmm. in there. <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah, the Every which way. We also get um, these like Ooh. tufty uh, forams. So many grow. different kinds of hydroids yeah. growing in there. <laughs> it's pretty cool. The polyps are in, so you can actually see the Lophelia calices pretty well. There's some polyps that are out over here. At yeah, the on the left hand top. side, yeah. you can see some of the polyps yeah. out. For many of those, polyps are in. But when you see it bright white like that, that means that it's that's alive. Yeah, usually. Yeah. I mean, it, when it's fresh dead, it also is a really yeah. bright white color. It it almost fe like you can almost it almost feels like if you were to touch it, it'd be fleshy, whereas like fresh dead, it looks more like the texture of bone. Mm. Like it's white, but it's has a different texture to it. Um, are you talking to us? 
Oh, sure. Uh, <laughs> um, whatever you guys are happy doing, I'm fine with. I mean, it, the next mound is probably going to be similar. I think it'd be nice to see it. Um, since we're seeing basically the same species over and over again, we got a good idea what's here. But it'd be nice to see if the next mound is also Lophelia. That's great. That's also. You know, see, the backside of this is, is standing dead, Carl. See, mm -hmm. the, all the living stuff is on, what, the it's south? The southern side? Yeah. Um, just an update, John texted me about yeah. the, the age of these mounds. Yes. He said it was off Norway. They cored it. And it was an 80-meter tall mound, and it was a million years old at the base. Wow. That's uh, off of Norway. Oh, that, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Four. Yeah, go get a little look at that fish. Yep. Oh, that's... Lamanema. Lamanema again, yeah. I'll they're tell you, they're I'm, common out here. It really is a beautiful fish. Is it Barbatulatum or Lamanema? I think the other one's Malinarum or something. I forget. Malinarum, maybe? Yeah, I remembered. Good job. <laughs> hmm. That's why they're called coral hakes. <laughs> <laughs> Just hopping from mound to mound. There's another vasella. Yeah, another large vase like glass sponge. Mm -hmm. This is a really large section of dead coral, standing dead coral. Yeah. A big chunk of standing dead coral. It's a couple meters wide at least on the top of here. On that. Probably about a meter thick, meter and a half, two meters thick, from where the, the bioharm top is to the to, 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 to the, the bottom top of, of that the, thicket. Yeah. yeah. I'm off to invertebrate zoology lab, so the next beat to hear is me hanging up. But, okay. Uh, <laughs> thanks, yeah. thanks for everything, Scott. Really appreciate. It. Thank you.
Those are some lucky students that get to be taught invertebrate zoology mm -hmm. by Scott France. Hopefully they know it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so of course as we as we move between these two mounds, mm -hmm. my, my focus is going into the pelagic realm at mm -hmm. the the stuff floating by. The stuff. The zooplankton floating by. The stuff. Critters. Yes. Looks like the standing dead's a little more consistent and a little less tall, maybe. Uh -huh. But it's really hard to tell because I can't see where the bottom of it is. Another coral mm -hmm. hake down on the bottom mm -hmm. right there. A possible petrosiid type sponge at 4 o'clock. These large thickets of coral are probably about, what, 10, 20 centimeters on the larger ones, and maybe 5, 10, 15 centimeters on the smaller. There it is. There's it. Can we look at this sponge at 4 o'clock, please? Um, if it's not too much trouble. Looks That's like a three fingered volcano sponge. Is that the Characella again? I'm not sure. It's lumpy like the Petrosiid. But I don't. Yeah, it looks probably closer to the one that we collected. I think it is. Yeah. But this one has three fingers instead of one, like three tubes. Mm hmm. So we would describe this as a cluster of hollow tubes in our data. Uh huh. It does look like probably the same sponge, mm -hmm. but it's hard to say. And these two down mm -hmm. here, they don't have that rim on the top. So it's probably the species we picked up earlier. And they are undescribed mm -hmm. so far. We are good whenever you guys are ready. The rippling in the water columns coming back. No? It's interesting how long it can take between when something new is actually seen like this in video mm -hmm. and how long it takes before that uh, species is described as oh new goodness. formally and gets a, a name. Yeah, it takes forever. Well, one, <laughs> one study found that on average it was 19 years oh, before, between goodness. the first collection of an organism that was new and the description of that organism. Oh my goodness, it takes forever to do that. Because well, you have to collect the species, and then you have to compare it to other type species and make sure it's not the same as the other type species we have on file, and then you get yeah. to give it a new name. And those type species could be in uh, museums all the way around the world, or sometimes the types have been lost. Mm -hmm. Now that everyone's asleep from talking about taxonomy. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and it is a faux pas to name one after yourself. That is a big no-no in science. So and people are struggling to find new names, so they get they get to name them out. They end up naming them after, like, famous people. Like, I know Johnny Depp has one. And yes. My cousin is an entomologist, and she got to name a, a fly. She described a new species of fly. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, I think it means something like old man because it looks like it has gray hair on its face, Aww. like a gray mustache. <laughs> like all. Uh, this year I got to name a, a species after my daughter. Oh, nice. Yeah, one of the, one of the new moon jellies that Sweet. we described. It's Aurelia Isla. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Everybody was happy about that except for my son. He's like, oh, what, am, what? What, am, what am I going to get, Dad? <laughs> you can get the next one, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> exactly. I, I still got a few years left in me. <laughs> Chris says she's got a couple she wants in it. She wants to name one of them after me, which is super cool. Yeah. And she's going to pick which one. 
So are we nearing the top of the next one? or No, it looks like little... we're still on the top of this previous mound or like on the edge of it. So we had to, he, had, he wanted to come down a little on the side. And then. And so we can like kind of skirt. So skirt yeah, over like sideways. Crab, crab yep. to the. And we'll go back up. Yeah. I understand. Because it, it's not really, it's not really entertaining to watch us go down slope because you really just don't get a lot of good footage because of the way the, the D2 moves. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we got a big fish here. Yeah, can you take a quick snap zoom or, or not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's take an eel or something, yeah. Yeah. Hiding from us. Andrea thinks it's probably a conger eel, mm -hmm. which we should be able to know for sure once we see the front end of it. Yeah. Maybe she'd know from the... <laughs> there we go. Yeah, he's hanging out underneath that standing dead lophelia. Nice little hiding spot for him. Yay, John's on the chat. Hi, John. So we've got an, about an hour to go, and this is our first dive of EX2107, NOAA Ocean Exploration, Windows to the Deep 2021. Mm -hmm. We've been exploring a site that we call the Reef Tracks. And it was essentially a ridge-like structure, which we uh, started at the base of and then worked our way up to the sort of the apex of the ridge and then followed that ridge up. And now we are traversing a little saddle over to the next sort of high point where we discovered or seen lots of live lophelia mm -hmm. surrounded by uh, dead, dead skeletons of lophelia that have provide that provide incredible habitat for a huge diversity of, of life on the Blake Plateau. Yeah. So we're at what, eight ten right now? We might have another five meters to go up on the next on the next mound we're thinking. We've collected what, ten samples so far? Uh, four of which are water. I say water, sorry. No, 11 samples, I 11. believe. Four of which were water. Okay. Ah, that's right. So we're flattening back out here where this core rubble has broken down a lot. So you no longer have that relief a vertical relief that we have with the standing dead coral. It's interesting that that conger eel we were looking at back there, Andrew just Quattrini just commented in the chat that it looked like it might be uh, conger oceanica, oceanicus, um, but that would be a depth record for the species. And uh, so she's going to 
check out the video and uh, see if that see if she can confirm that identification. But that's pretty exciting. Mm-hmm. So it looks like these little white Gorgonians are likely um, bamboo corals. So they're all facing basically the same direction. Right? So they, yeah. the flat planar area is facing Against the towards, the, yeah, yeah. towards the south, which is the direction the current's coming from. Advantageous way to grow mm-hmm. if you're eating food that comes on those currents. Yeah. So uh, we're in the saddling area between uh, two mounds. So we're coming between two mounds right now. There's another, I believe it's Comactinia. That's the um, crinoid we just passed over. And we still have these brown nipthids, or soft corals, which are likely pseudodrypha. And I'm getting that rippling again, that temperature gradient rippling in the water column. It might be a really cool sponge ahead at noon. Uh, temperature now is almost 8 degrees. Mm-hmm. And then up in Sirius, it's about 9 degrees. And that's about 50, Sirius is about 15 meters uh, above us. Yeah, a little like ear shaped sponge. Yeah, not a clue what it is. A little white yellow sponge. Could be a geoded like the one we saw before. Kind of malformed. With those oscules. Yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah, I mean. Demo sponges yeah. are really tough. Looks like it's got lots of. Um, spicules on the outside that kind of pick up the schmutz that passes by. Mm-hmm. Real. All right, we're good whenever you guys are. There's actually one really far ahead of us. Then you zoom out. That's pretty big. I think. Yeah. It's like at 2 o'clock. Now it's at 3 o'clock. That's pretty far away. Big round ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alan's like giddy and that's for me. He's I'm so excited. So giddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope you keep the enthusiasm by day twenty two. <laughs> no, this is it. After this, this you're done. Gonna, I'm jaded. <laughs> <laughs> Now I think I'll be able to keep the enthusiasm mm-hmm. up. Well, we're doing that shipwreck tomorrow. Hopefully, 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 Possible. It's, a shipwreck. Yes. hopefully it's a shipwreck. We've also got something odd shaped. I wonder what this white oh. thing is. Two at three, but that ball sponge is probably a geoded, big hefty bowling ball looking thing. Big. More like grapefruity. Yeah. That whole group, Astra Florida, mm-hmm. is, is, well, a lot of work has been done recently in sorting out the systematics of that group. It is definitely a challenging one. Yeah, I mean, I don't really, I, mean, <laughs> I can get it to Geodia or Geodeity. <laughs> That's like about it. Uh, they're neat though, because if you if you were if you cut them in half and open them up, they have like this rind on the outside, mm-hmm. and then all the spicules on the inside face the same direction, so they look like a geode, yeah. like a geo, like a rock geode. That's where they got their name from. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's interesting. To the left. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit. That closer. is very weird. It's like a rubbery. Yeah, that's definitely a different sponge. It's encrusting and it has all these finger-like processes. Mm-hmm. Be curious if those are 
hollow if they're the os oscula. Mm -hmm. I kind of assume so. But they're pretty thin at the at the mm -hmm. tips. Awesome. Yeah, if you want more uh, information on our dive paths, tracks, and plans, um, you can go to oceanexplorer.noaa.gov and just go ahead and search for the Okeanos, and we're on dive 2107. Yeah, that's definitely a geode. Let's get, get a good shot of that guy. Yes, please. Thank you. Ah, that's not, crazy looking. I'm not sure that's... Is that Geodia? Mm -hmm. I don't think. Oh, I don't know, actually, so I shouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> that's very maybe, hairy. Maybe one of the spongy people. <laughs> More spongy people. <laughs> and what's going on there, there? It's a big osculum. Yeah. And then it's got these, like, hairy tracks on its sides. Oh, man, that's weird. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. In a sort of grotesque-looking, <laughs> grotesque way, if you can say that. <laughs> Doesn't look good to handle no, I would imagine those spicules are pretty nasty. They're right through your gloves. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah, I think it's that's like a pink texture. That's the point. It's yeah. Not too many things want to go and yeah. chomp on that. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to eat it for sure. Clear. has a little hermit crab and the ophioroids living on it. Woo, that's neat. Yeah. Sponges, they're like hotels. Yep. Hey, who's that? Hello, this is Christina. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Mama. What do you think? For sponge? Yeah. Hola, my dear. This is Christina again, and somehow I, I cannot get in the chat again. Oh, that's oh. okay. You guys, I think it's a geodia. It is a geodia. Oh, oh, nice. I think it is. Uh, but I haven't seen it with, you know, with that surface. The one before was really interesting. It might be an Oceanapia. Oh. Okay. But this one, I think it's a geodia. Sweet. But, you know, more certain the family, geoide. Uh, amazing, really interesting specimen. Yeah, with those crazy spicules. Awesome, Chris, the, thank you. And the one that might have been Oceanapia, that was quite interesting as well. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you got bounced out from the chat. Don't worry, don't worry. We're, we're working on it. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank Bye. you. Bye. And the plumer plumerella, this field of plumerella, and the and bamboo coral. It looks like you can see them, you know, flopping in the the. It's not breeze, but okay, current. Yeah. I guess <laughs> it's just and field of them. It's across this whole mound here. For two. I just want to mention tomorrow on NOAA Ocean Exploration, this expedition, uh, 2107, we're going to be going to a potential underwater cultural heritage site uh, where we'll be looking for, at least possibility, a shipwreck known as the Bloody Marsh. And that can be, uh, there's a story written about that that you can access via oceanexplorer.noaa.gov. 
you can go there and then search for the Bloody Marsh, which is the name of the, the sunken ship that we'll be looking for, and you'll be able to find the story about its background. Look at this field. Uh, pigeon. Pigeon is the name of the. Uh, oh. You're looking for the the because Chris said that she had fallen out of the chat. Yes. So if she download she downloads Pigeon, that should be able to help her. And I'm going to do that after this. I'm to I also. Yeah. I'm going to. This for our just for our uh, land-based scientists who are in the chat room. Because it's you get thrown out pretty quick, too, sometimes if we lose connections. So you get thrown out of the chat room, and then... Then it's hard to keep up with... Mm -hmm. You can't read the, anybody's comments. The community <laughs> science that's going on. <laughs> exactly. Centered right here with NOAA Ocean Exploration. Yay! Yeah, okay, so if you're just uh, joining us, we're nearing the end of our dive here. We have about 45 minutes left um, of a day. We we got in the water around 8, 8.30 we launched, and we got to the bottom around 9 this morning. Um, we are on the Blake Plateau, and that's east of Jacksonville, Florida, about 160 miles um, from shore. Our uh, starting depth today was 870 meters. We hit the bottom of this hit. I shouldn't say hit. <laughs> we gently eased to the bottom of this uh, mound feature that we have out here. Um, and that was about 870, 870 meters deep. And at the base of that, we had lots of this Lophelia rubble, uh, which is pretty indica indicative of the base of uh, Lophelia reefs out here. It's totally normal. Um, that's a natural process that happens with Lophelia reefs and how their, the bioherms are formed. Um, we are coming up to our, I believe, our fourth mound of the day. And on the previous few mounds, we have found live Lophelia. So we're just transversing, transversing the side of this one mound so we can get to the next mound before we end our dive in about 45 minutes. Um, our total rise was about 62 meters from the base where we landed until where we're going to end this dive at like about 805 maybe, or 808 meters. Um, so the total slope for the whole dive is about 15 average, 15 meters slope. And in sections on top of these mounds, we're closer to like 45 or 50 degree slopes, so they're pretty steep at the tops. Um, the total length of this feature we're on is about 5 kilometers long. And it's this series of mounds after mound after mound after mound. So um, if this one mound is a Lophelia mound, probably many others are also Lophelia mounds. They're a similar shape in the multi-beam. Of course, you wouldn't know until we got down there, but this gives us a good idea of what the ground truth, what we call ground truthing looks like. So most of these mounds are probably pretty similar in, as far as species and, and um, 
coral formation goes. And our dive track today was about 820 meters long, um, and we're we're nearing yeah the end of our dive shortly. So, okay. we've got about yep. 45 minutes to go, mm -hmm. and uh, we are out on the Blake Plateau, which uh, extends from Cape Hatteras in the north to down to the Bahama Banks off the coast of Florida. It's about 100,000 square miles, square kilometers, excuse me, and it supports. Uh, Lots of different uh, types of uh, marine communities, including these cold water coral communities, which are of great interest. Mm -hmm. That's a um, anthomastus or a strawberry coral. This type of soft coral. Soft coral with mm -hmm. huge polyps. Yeah. They can actually retract them, so sometimes we just see them, they look like little clubs, like, like clubs on sticks, you know. When the polyps are out, they can tell they tell her how pretty they are. You can see how much rubble is around mm -hmm. these of the dead skeletal elements from the Lophelia, and how much, how many different small organisms. I think just to the bottom left is that like a little. Uh, there's like or a something? hole in, no, there's a hole in there. Oh, neat. It looks like there's a crustacean of some sort, maybe. See ophioroid arms. Yeah. And that. And these white, these white organians are bamboo corals. They're one of the more common species out on this reef. And again, we're seeing this rippling in the water column. And that's from um, probably temper temperature differentials. Such so a quick change in temperature, what we call thermocline. And then there's primnoids, these like feather, they're very feathery um, gorgonians, or like just a field of them. That's probably what most of this looks like, at least macro wise. There's a little yellow sponge there, 3 o'clock. What is that? A little lumpy yellow sponge, some I think. Lumpy yellow sponge. <laughs> Demo sponge of some sort. Hmm. Does it have zoids growing out of it? That is that oscular membranes or something? Like oh, see that yeah. thin layer around each hole. Yeah. I'm looking at. Mm. That's pretty neat looking. It's unusual looking. Behind. I don't Is know. I was looking at it. looked like a nudibranch, doesn't it? Let's take a look at what's behind that sponge, just like above it. It might be a worm. Slightly to the right. I think it's a nudie. Uh, n down. A oh, that's another nice sponge. But I, I was thinking below that. A little bit more. 
Yeah, it was like a hair above the yellow sponge there. It's Just clear. above the yellow sponge. Yeah, in between Top those right. two fans. I think it's a nudibranch. But we're getting pushed around a little bit. That happens. Yeah. And a bit of a current. <laughs> when you zoom back. Yeah, it just disappears. <laughs> yeah. It's gone. <laughs> How far away we are from everything. That zoom camera is awesome. Chat room is saying that audio has stopped. Hmm. Can you guys hear us? Well, Andrea says she has it. Oh, okay, good. Oh, you're missing a red guy. Look. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> there he goes. He bopped the, he booped the, the ROB. Boop. Uh, is it a red Tina four or a red jellyfish? Oh, yeah, we know what? Red. Yeah. I have no idea what it was. It was about this big, and it was red, and it flew by. <laughs> so if I was someone who's had hundreds of hours of experience mm -hmm. of this, I would know it like that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> We have another one of those spon those weird sponges, right? That we oh, looked at yeah. might have been the ocean apia that uh, Chris was talking about. Possibly top mm -hmm. right. Nephthids. Uh, uh, the one with fingers, sort of. Uh, at, yeah, uh, two o'clock. Two o'clock. Yeah, like up on that ridge up there. Thank you. Mm-hmm. It's all good. It looks almost like a like praying manis legs <laughs> stuck on it. It's just so amorphous. Yeah, it's really weird. Like the little like hooks at the top. Yeah. Like play doh or something. He's an oddball. I know, I like Very it. Very highly reflective. <laughs> <laughs> That's really interesting. <laughs> That's really weird. I don't feel like I've seen that. Is Christina going to call in? And she she got back into the chat room, so I'll just give All her a right. sec. I'm sure she can type it out if she has an idea of what it is. I think, I think it's similar to the one that she said was Ocean Appia earlier. It does. It has those, those like, finger fingers, fistules, these, right? All these fingers are bent over, back, yeah. down. Look like a peep. That looks like a peep. Yeah. You get it, get it. You know the little marshmallow cookies. Yeah. Marshmallow peeps. Yeah. Ocean apia, maybe I, again. It does look very similar to what we saw before, if that was ocean apia. But weirdo rama. Yeah. We don't need another collection, do we? Well, we have one more if you want. You put there's it in a, here. There's a bio box still available. Want to grab it? No, I think, you know, unless we hear otherwise, we might as well. How large is this? Maybe we could use the... The suction goes. Little shrimp guy. Hi, shrimp. Yeah. Let's see. Let's zoom out. Get a feel for what's involved. It yeah. might be bigger. 
Can you guys turn the lasers on? There you go. About ten centimeters. So it won't fit through the suction hose. It'd have to go into it'd have to go into uh, the bio box. Which we could probably get away with. Yeah. Can we collect this? Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. This is sample 12. Yes. So 11 was a water. Okay. 12B. Possibly Oceanapia. And we have to make sure we snap the last Niskin bottle before we took off, too. Exactly. Yeah. Since we're getting close. This is probably our last biological sample. Unless something tiny and magical shows up. For our final... For final bucket. <laughs> <laughs> This is about a 10 centimeter cream colored amorphous, possibly Oceanapia sponge. Yeah. It's probably going to be pretty rubbery, but it should be attached to that coral rubble, so it probably should just pop right up. Yeah, sure. Yeah, if you can grab the whole. This. If it is Oceanapia, there's a possibility there's like a bulb that it lives like underneath this, underneath the substrate. Oh. So we'll see if it, see what happens when it, get a good scoop of it. That's nice. I did not know that. Yeah, they grow, they grow like this, like a, like a bulbous vase and then these fistules that shoot out the top. But this one's so weird, I don't, you know, I have no idea what it's going to do. Kind of like an onion. Yes. Right? With that, like, round bulb that kind of sits under the sediment. Uh-huh. Hard to believe that's... 800 meters below us mm -hmm. <laughs> and being worked on with such control. And it's like instantaneous too, right, using those fiber optic cables we're attached to.
you go. Very well done. Um, and in BioBox, um, Starboard Inner, there is a Gorgonian, so um, just be careful. So you don't want to lose that. Starboard Outer. Yeah. Great, great, nice. And shake it off. There it goes. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, pilot. That was 12B. All right, so we're going to move on. You can see the the plankton in the water is just blowing past us. It's pretty yep. heavy current out here on top of the mound.
Oh, yep. There's the red guy. <laughs> Goes the red guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's he, like they fly like right next to the camera. You can't. Yeah. You can't catch him. I think. I think that's that look, a red side dip in Cena. Cena four. The Cena four. Yeah. Comb jelly. Yeah. Definitely not sure, but. Mm-hmm. And there's another one of those red shrimps we have. Right, giant, giant armored shrimp. Yep. And then we got this crinoid, which I believe is Comactinia. But I don't remember entirely if that's its name. I would need Chuck to chime in and confirm. We have another yellow one up here, the yellow crinoid. Let's see. Yep. And then something floating around behind it. Can we get a snap zoom on that yellow thing dead center? Yeah. Yeah, yellow rhino. It's the same same species, different color, or close to the same species. It's got those long pinwheels on each arm. Mm -hmm. And then it looks like a gorgonia or hydroid or something behind it. Okay, we're good. Thank you. Yeah, with the gastropod on there. Mm -hmm. I say we get to the next mound as fast as possible. Yeah. And that way we can just see what it looks like, and by the time we get there, it'll be time to leaf bottom. Yeah, there's another two more, two more crinoids over here at four o'clock. And again, we've got this nice 30, 45 degree slope, kind of up to the top of the mound. We're coming up towards the top of the mound. We're still on this. What is that, the western slope? Eastern slope. Kind of the uh, eastern slope. It's the eastern slope. We've got these uh, bacterial mats that are growing here. Shaped like triangles. Mm hmm. Weird, huh? Schmutz. Another red shrimp. And the, the, again, the dead lophelia rubble. Yeah, with lots of encrusting sponges mm -hmm. in and amongst them. Some small chrysogorgid gorgonians. These little pink tufts, again, little pink bushes. Some nephtheids. Nephtheids are soft coral. They kind of look like broccoli, like, like a pink broccoli. <laughs> Pink squishy broccoli. I would imagine they don't taste very good though, so I don't recommend eating them. No, yeah, well, they probably think they have those <laughs> giant spicules in them, right? Yeah, like and stinging cells. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, you're not a picnicconid. Uh, yeah, apparently, I'm not a picnicconid, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's most of this is, is uh, smushed up, coral rubble. It's fairly old, dead. Um, there's some spots of some lighter color. So it's either recently flipped over coral bits or it's, you know, a little newer on the on the having died side. I don't know how to say that. Less old dead. I mean, I don't know. Like. Look at this one blowing in the yeah, current, see it just flopping around there. It's really strong.
of that blue sponge in there. It really stands out. Yeah, it's really bright, huh? There's also a yellow Desmosella that we see out here. It's similar. Um, but it's just a bright yellow instead of that bright blue. More of these um, crinoids. Yeah, so it looks like yeah, looks like this is the top of this mound. There's no standing living or very little standing dead. It's mostly crushed rubble, coral rubble. But it's still. You know, holding life for nephthids and sponges, and if we either tons, zoom in, so tons of stuff. Arthropods and yeah. rhizoids. So, you think this mound? feeling pretty similar to the one before? I think the one before had a lot more life on it. A living coral head on it. So I'm not sure why this one didn't ha doesn't have any and the other one does. I mean, we are outside the HAPC. So this is a possibility it's been fished, but I don't see any fishing gear or any track lines. Uh -huh. So I have no, I don't have enough evidence to say it's from that. Sure. Um, I also don't have enough evidence to say it's not from that. So... <laughs> You know, what do you do? Right? I can only report what I'm observing, which is a pile of rubble, right? Yeah. And it's old dead. It's been here old and dead for quite some time, I would think. There are some new white spots, but none of them are, like, standing, you know, yeah, standing all, new all death. Nice. It's all crushed. Yeah. So... And the other way you can tell is if this old dead is if you look at the calices of each of the coral polyps. Like, if they're old, they'll be, like, rounded and beat up. Kind of like when you put sure. a stone in a tumbler yeah. and all the sharp edges pop off and it gets smooth. Yeah. Right? So it's kind of like that, but it's with the calices. So the longer it sits here, the more those sharp edges wear down and they get, like, more of, like, a like a hole and less like a, this beautiful, you know, mm -hmm. like ridges and edges in them so um these look pretty old to me yeah so there's still a lot of life there but we're seeing less uh yeah living larger sponges yeah. as well yeah there goes a little uh tina four comb nice. jelly floating by Yeah, and if you look down on Sirius, this really is no living, there's no living thickets that we're seeing on this one mound. Yeah, unlike the top of the, mm -hmm. the last mound. That yeah. we saw. So why there's some on that mound and not on this mound, who knows? And I don't have an, I don't have an answer. I don't know if anybody has an answer. Yeah. Hmm. And how long has it been dead? also don't know that. Um. Three meters. Oh, nice. I'm going to do our last um, Niskin bottle uh, at the top we, of before here. Before we leave the bottom, we should definitely okay. do that. We can do it. That will be our final environmental DNA sample of dive one from. Windows in the Deep mm -hmm. 2011. And once again, for you who weren't here earlier listening, uh, 
for collecting water samples on uh, this expedition, this NOAA Ocean Exploration Expedition, so that we can extract uh, DNA from that water. And it turns out that water has DNA that has been sloughed off from other organisms, just sort of loose floating in the water, or dead skin cells from organisms. And so we can get a signature of part of the community, anyway, that's living in this water by sequencing that DNA back in the lab. And this is another way for us to characterize these cold water coral environments. So, turns out my math, my mic had fallen down, so I was quite inaudible, so I'm going to repeat myself. <laughs> okay. I <laughs> apologize. <Okay. laughs> we are going to make our uh, fifth and final uh, environmental DNA sample now. Uh, for those of you who weren't around to listen earlier, we are collecting seawater on these transects so that we can then examine DNA that's in that water. So the ocean waters have loose DNA and then also sloughed off skin cells from the organisms that are living there. And so what we'll do is we'll filter all that DNA out and then we will examine the genetics of the DNA to help us understand uh, the organisms that are living in the water. This is another way for us to characterize these cold water coral environments, these communities. So in addition to the, the video that we've taken and the individual specimens that we've been able to take, we're also collecting these uh, environmental DNA or eDNA samples as a way to help us understand uh, this ecosystem off the southeast United States. Yeah. I heard that that time. I heard it the last time too, though. Well, <laughs> the chat room said I was inaudible. So while I was blobbing, did we make that collection? I'm not sure. They popped. You did. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Nineteen forty eight. Thank you. Pilot, this is science. Um, I have a question from Shoreside uh, for you guys. Will you be able to answer for me? Absolutely.
What's we're at 803, 803 meters roughly at the yep. end here. 803, and we're pulling off we're the pulling bottom. Off bottom. All right, so thank you for uh, joining us today. We will hope you tune in tomorrow, too. Um, if you are just tuning in now, um, I'm sorry, the dive is over. <laughs> <laughs> Should have got here earlier. Um, we'll be in the water again tomorrow, probably around 9 a.m. Yeah. Um, and we are hopefully going to be diving on a possible shipwreck. We may have um, found the bloody marsh, we're hoping. We are uh, hoping. We're not sure yet, though. Um, so tune in tomorrow and come explore with us. That would be fun for us and fun for you. Yeah. Um, so just to recap, we went, our max depth was... 870 meters at the base of this mound. Um, we're 160 miles to the east of Florida, roughly at um, roughly Jacksonville area. Um, our shallowest point was about 803 meters when we popped off the bottom. Uh, so the overall rise is about 62 meter um, 62 meter relief that we tra traveled today. Um, slope was roughly 15 meters on average, but the end of the dive uh, on the top of the mounds is a much higher slope than we were had at the bottom. Um, we This feature we're on is a series of mounds. It's about 15 kilometers long, and our dive track was about 820 meters. Um, we collected, what are we at, 13 samples, which include five eDNA or water samples. Um, for those of you on the line, on the science side, um, if you could stay on the line, we're going to talk about tomorrow's dive if you're interested. Um, or if you are interested in tomorrow's dive and are not on the line, feel free to call us in. We're going to have a uh, post-dive a post dive wrap-up and a pre-dive meeting for tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, we'll just run a discuss dive, too. I'm just talking. At about four. But I have a question for the ROV pilots. Okay, so um, my husband wants to know if you guys are really good at those crane games. It depends on the drive. <laughs> They're rigged, you know. They actually, like, have soft squeezes, and they, like, rig them. And that the harder, the, the better the prize is, the harder the rigging. Yeah, they don't yeah. have the same foot pounds as we have with these. Yeah, foot right. Because <laughs> really the challenge there is that the game is rigged. Here they oh, the, the crane always works. <laughs> <laughs> mm.